All right, let's get into it. Welcome everybody for another stream. Today we're going to be doing something a bit different as opposed to doing straight up studies. Let's do some design. So design is an entirely different subject that don't, we don't cover very often on the stream, but uh, I've been doing so much design for my portfolio that I think I'm happy enough trying to at least have some uh, measure of introduction towards it. So we are going to go through just about every phase today. We won't be doing three fourths, I don't think, but we'll get up to some interesting character sketches most likely and maybe even a, a semi-rendered piece if at all possible so to give you the idea of what we're going to be doing in terms of like the pipeline let me show you some of the characters that i've done so here's an example of the full pipeline right so here are some initial exploratory silhouettes right there for uh, like a robotic character right over there and these came from these initial silhouettes which is my initial explor exploration silhouettes, and then that went into some rough sketches like these, which then goes into something more complicated, like a design orthographic, something like this. So these are very, very important things. While they might seem a little bit too rudimentary and plain, it's, these are found the fundamental building blocks of most major characters in every production. And you should be able to produce these if at all you're creating characters, because it makes everything so internally consistent and it's just generally a very good idea especially if you plan to use a character across several pieces here's my ortho for that so i chose this guy over here and i expanded upon him so stuff like this is very very interesting to me uh, i do like it and i've done it for quite a few characters already so here's some the protagonist right there and we have uh, my, one of my antagonists somewhere around here, but the cool thing is we get to design just about everything that goes on these characters, which is really fun. Like for example, this character over here has a set of arms that fold into her back, and I get to design what those arms look like, and how they work, which is just all around a lot of fun. How they fit on her back, for instance, with these kind of sketches. So some of these need to be refined, of course, but I have the ideas down for the majority of these ideas. So it's a really, really cool thing. Like, for example, this character over there has a has a strange looking arm, for instance. So this character over here, I chose the second one again. That's his orthographic. I'm sorry, that's his uh, three fourth. And I get to design what his arm looks like. And once I have everything in every angle, so this was his arm silhouettes right there. And from there, I go to my 
or the graphics for my arms, which is... I need to keep this a bit more organized because it's a, it's a struggle trying to find certain files. Here we go. That's my orthograph. Right, so it's a kind of cool thing. Figure out how things look, figure out how they're oriented. And it's just a fun thing overall. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend maybe 15 minutes and I'm going to collect some references. Then we'll do silhouettes for a half an hour. We can do a bunch of silhouettes in half an hour, no problem. Might be a little bit slower on stream, but we should be able to do at least let's say 10 um, at minimum. Then we'll take three of those, we'll push, push those into sketches, and then we'll take the sketches and we'll maybe do a render or something. That might be fun. Okay. That being said, let's switch over. This might be a horrendously bad idea, by the way, because you shouldn't be searching for images um, just like that. So I'm just gonna vet my board on Pinterest just for a second, and um, just make sure that my downloads folder doesn't have anything weird in it. And then we can just switch over the view to my um, to my Pinterest board. That really quickly. Now, sis, this has a gun. It is good to see. Okay, so let me give you the impetus behind this particular. This particular piece, right? Show me your stuff. <laughs> uh, we're gonna try our best, Iris. How's it going, Nas? And thanks for the follow of the lines. So this is every step in the design pipeline, basically. It goes from, so let me show you to you for like this character, for example, right? So I'll show you the sills for this character. So we start out with a bunch of initial exploration. The idea is this guy's gonna be like a spellcaster that wears like Middle Eastern slash Turkish garb. So he has a headdress and stuff like that. So it goes from a bunch of silhouettes to final silhouettes to character sketches. So you see these are one is to one basically. So well not exactly one is to one, I'll rearrange them. But this guy is this guy, this guy is that, that guy over here. You get the correlation, right? And I get my 3D which needs to be refined a bit more. And then I go into details about how his arm looks, for example. And I do arm silhouettes and stuff like that. So it's that's the, the entire process behind creating a character. Uh, a consistent, believable character that's well iterated and well thought out and kind of works with the ideas that you have. So it's been really fun uh, doing this for several characters. That's one, my, my, my robot guy. I'm a big fan of this robot guy. This is the latest one that I've done. And uh, I am really happy with it because uh, the intricacy that's in this in this thing, it took a lot of work. It took a lot of research. I mean, it looks, it looks kind of okay. It's like banal. Give it like a 6 out of 10. But I like the fact that I know how everything works. And I like I know how exactly I arrived at this particular, at this particular looking uh, robot dude. You know, I like how I thought everything out. It's a cool thing. It's a very fulfilling thing to create original characters, and I like it when it's not just like okay, I sat down and I spent two hours and I put something together. Like it's all well thought out, and I have a bunch. Like if I ever choose to incorporate anything else, I can go back and like take. Maybe I like the rocket launch. Maybe I like the head over here. Maybe I like you know the the basic kind of structure of this guy. I can always go back and get something from a previous uh, step in the design line. So we're going to try and do something similar. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we need to collect some references really quickly. So we'll spend 15 minutes on this and I want to collect a few things. So this is the the image that I want to go off of. I want to have a creature that can have his mouth kind of go back and reveal this crazy set of fangs. I think that's a very cool thing. And I, I have the idea that it's going to be like semi-aquatic, but that I'm not going to I'm not going to stress too much about because I want to keep it kind of open-ended. So this this mouth thing is like the major key feature. It's going to have something got to do with this mouth. So at the end of this, let's, we, want, we should also have um, an, like an end, end in mind, right? So look at these creature silhouettes, for example. This is from a game that I uh, just finished playing. It's from um, Remnant, if you guys play that game. Remnant, uh, what's it called? Something from the ashes. Here's an animal from that. And we want to kind of get to this stage today. Uh, which should be perfectly possible. So you see some hints, that's a character sketch right there from a silhouette and he's brought into some variations of the head, figure out how the mechanics work. But you see how kind of fairly well thought this is, like it's not just he's putting random assortments of stuff in here. And most likely he drew from Dobermans, um, the real life dog, to kind of get to this uh, final conclusion maybe. Uh, and also look at the, the arch in the spine, probably exaggerated from hounds, greyhounds and whippets for example. So you can see some of the design ideology and the fact that they're not just throwing things randomly. Uh, everything is somewhat grounded in reality. So there's a very, very good creature 
design course out there. It's taken by Terrell Whitlash. If you don't know Terrell Whitlash, um, she is the one that designed the majority of characters in Star Wars, in Avatar. So a very, very profoundly talented artist. And she, being the incredible creature artist that she is, often and always will talk about if you want to get into, into creature design, you need to understand what underlying anatomy is going to be there because there has to be some amount of believability. You can't just put a stick over there and expect it to move. Right? There has to be musculature, you have to have some indication towards bone, and all of that's kind of done here. Also, I fucking love this highlight, man. This afterthought highlight. How cool is that? I gotta start putting that into more of my pieces. I kind of like the afterthought. I was, uh, I'm actually thinking about that more because I did a crit yesterday for, uh, for a friend of mine, uh, for Azar, and he had uh, a piece that he was working on, which was like a jolt, it was a Pokemon battle piece, right? So I gave him a comp at the end of it, and just to kind of like semi-render the comp, uh, this was like a 10-15 minute comp of, um, of a Kingdra versus a uh, Skarmory. But I just tossed in some highlight at the end of it, and I was like, hey, it looks pretty good, <laughs> it looks pretty okay. Like the silhouette on that, I mean the thumbnail on that reads really, really well. Not like super well, I don't like the amount of blue in here. That's my one concern about this painting, that needs to be a lot more warm. Like if I was to do this piece myself, I'd rather bring out... I'd bring out the greens way more, and this water over here. Or I'd have this farmer do something that involves fire, even though it's a steel type, it doesn't have flamethrower, but... I would want some amount of warm in there. And plus you can always cheat stuff out, like we have rocks over here for example, we can bring out the earthy, ochre texture of the rock, and that's perfectly fine as well, right? So you can bring the rocks, because right on the rocks are I think the sad blue, but we can just go a little bit warmer than that. That's like one of my one issue with that, because I like the, the overall composition, I like, the, I like this key element here that with the water, and uh, if you guys saw my compositional breakdown in his stream, the composition reads quite well, I think it's a good composition. Right, so it has some, it's a very basic one, it's not like an extreme perspective or anything like that, but it makes sense, I'm following some really, really basic rules of thirds. Um, also, an interesting fact about the rule of thirds, you don't actually have to do it in thirds, you can actually do it based on the um, Fibonacci series. There's a great video on that, by the way, uh, Andrew Tischler, if you guys know that guy's channel. Um, or you can just Google Fibonacci series composition. Um, and it's interesting because you divide things by a golden ratio and that's also can lead to some very interesting um, compositional ideas, but a lot of the Perspective actually comes from Azar's original piece. Can I show that to you if you want since we're talking about this? So I'll show that to you really quick, but this was his original that he gave me um, well, This has some layers toggled off I think But he gave me If I can find it, it's somewhere around here Yeah, this was his original piece, right there. And I, I, there's a lot of good things going. I think I don't stress on like the amount of good that he did with this piece, but it's not bad actually in terms of the, of the overall. Like he's doing something that a lot of people make a mistake in, because when you do a landscape or you do something that involves the landscape quite heavily, a very common mistake to kind of fall back on is to make the, the page an equal division. But you shouldn't do that because a picture should be either a landscape or a seascape, meaning show or, or a skyscape rather. So show more of the sky or more of the land or more of the sea in this case. But when you do an equal division, it ends up being a very, very boring composition. I, I really like this. Even the tilt over there, it really adds to the dynamism or the dynamicness of the Kingdra. The only issue is with the horizon line being here, there's no way you're going to be able to see this in this perspective, which is why I just grabbed a 3D asset from Sketchfab and I bashed it in to my, uh, to my picture. So, fun little thing. And he did that quite well, I think, in terms of the... So I just, you see that the horizon line, it's the exact same. It's the exact same in both piece, both pictures. I just, uh, I actually literally painted over the picture. I still have his original somewhere in here. Uh, can't find it exactly, but yeah, maybe I just painted over it. He is growing a lot. What is a reference picture with the open mouth? A dog? A chupacabra? <laughs> it's not a chupacabra. It's a dog that has a, hey, that's from yesterday's stream. It's a dog that um, has a leaf blower in its mouth. Okay, yeah, let me close some of these files because it's too much. I might have accidentally closed a file that I actually wanted to work on, which is somewhat unfortunate. Okay, we can just remake one. I'm not gonna lose too much time. 
Okay, let me just quickly gray out this and then we can hunt for our references. Like I said, 15 minutes for that. And then we start drawing. We start iterating some silhouettes and then we can start doing everything else. So it's gonna be a fun little time. Hopefully you guys have, a, have an interest in it, but I need to do it anyway for my own practice. So like I said, streams have to be beneficial. So it's gonna be beneficial. Okay, so I'm gonna grab that initial reference. We have made a folder specifically for this and let's build up our mood board, right? So this is our, our primary inciting reference. So we'll shift over. Let's shift over to Pinterest really quickly. So I need to search for a few things. Let's start the timer. Control one, hopefully. The timer begun. Oh, wait, there's no timer on this particular scene anyway. I'll just take a note, I'll take a note at the time. 1744, all right. So I first need to look at some sides. So the way I'm gonna be iterating this is from a side view. So I wanna get a side view of a hound. The side of a hound. Well, not that kind of hound, that hound's way too cute. Okay, side of a whippet or a greyhound. I want to have that beautiful arching stomach that's always, always really, really cool. So side or profile being keywords. I just want to find something that's semi-decent. So none of these seem to be sufficient. That seems to be fine. So we'll get that one. It's a figurine, but again, I don't really care about the fact that if it's a model, if it's 3D. All I really, really am worried about is the fact that I can actually see that silhouette quite well. So we'll take some profiles of animals really quickly. So let's get a dog profile really quickly. I don't mind even if this is uh, artwork as well, because what we're really searching for, those folds are kind of cool. Let's get, let's grab that for a second. So I'm slowly, slowly, I'm building up an amount of references, right? I like that pose a lot. Let's grab that. That's really cool. Maybe we can make it bipedal even. So that's kind of cool. So at this stage, oh, I love this photographer is really good. I've actually drawn quite a few, um, quite a few references from this one dude. I just want like a really clean silhouette that I can start iterating over. Something like that is also quite good because I don't plan on drawing out the silhouette too many times. At least the initial one. I like to build upon existing ones because it just saves a bunch of time, uh, and then I'll paint over it with a big sweeping brush. So that's enough for the dog because I don't want to get too familiar with this. Uh, let's go with reptiles. So I want to look at basilisk lizards. That seems like a good uh, place to start. So basilisk. Are, th are those called basilisk lizards? I think they are. The ones that run on water. That's kind of cool. Okay. What are the ones with the big frill? Are they just called frilled lizards? They might. I like that structure on the head though. That's kind of cool. Let's just grab one of these, just for personal reference. Let's grab that one. I kind of want something with the whole body in there. That's cool, hell yeah. That's that's what we're looking for right there. That has a lot of flavor, a lot of things we can use. Okay, let's save that really quickly. So we're just grabbing images right now. That's fucking cool as hell. I would like, I would like that in our piece, especially for the rendering, if we choose to make that scaly. So this is the power of our image boat. So I, I can now put these yellow flakes if I wanted to, or any, any kind of flake. Uh, in the piece if I needed to right now because I get ideas from nature so it's not the it's not really the idea that's the problem it's bringing it into reality in a way that looks really really cool I like that fold right there that's really cool those folds the way it falls back down because I don't want it to always be open okay so those are my frill lizard references let's grab um, I want the lips to curl back but the thing is they need to be able to curl back based on some amount of musculature, right? So let's look at chimps bearing their fangs. Chimp, uh, how do I put this? Chimp teeth bear? I don't think I've ever searched for this one before, so I don't exactly know. Well, that's not really what I want. Because I know there are certain monkeys that, well, let's just say monkey then, sort of chimp, apparently Pinterest isn't like that. Oh, you look at that, look at how cool that is. And that's terrifying. That's so scary. But I want to get some of these folds in there from these references. Like I want to get animals that have very, very mobile looking lips. Like this, for instance, right? This uh, baboon over here. Look at how that lip curls behind. That's really cool. It's terrifying, but it's really, really cool. So I'm going to grab a few of these. Another one that does... Jesus, what the hell is that? 
Another one that does this is horses. Horses also do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna grab a couple of horse references as well. Uh, I'm just seeing if there's anything else that I need from here, anything that looks cool. In, in terms of, since we're looking at monkeys already. I, I like the that, that head right there. Like I like how that face is on that head. Look at that mass of like fur and muscle and whatnot on the neck. That's a really cool silhouette. Let's grab that. Even though it's not in um, in profile, I can use ideas from there. So I can go, go from strict mood board. Okay, so I want to look at the next, if I have a chance to, let's look at horse lips. Because horses can curve the lips backwards to bare their teeth. So I really want to look, not horse tips, horse lips, please. Uh, let's just grab, because I want to see that the musculature of the um, orbicularis oris. I want that one. I want to see exactly how that happens. So I might even go through the anatomy to this. Yori, how's it going? Good to see you, man. Have you heard of the image toolbar? It's an extension for Google Chrome that makes saving images from sites extremely efficient. As in, you only click on one button and it saves it to a priest. That's kind of cool. That's uh, that's really useful. Hold on, let me. I'm gonna write that down real quickly. But thanks. That's cool. That would save me a bunch of time. Also, you guys can um, can jump in. By the way, you guys can jump in because if you have ideas on um, on what could work in the idea. So if you're wondering what I'm um, what I'm building a mood board for right now because we're gonna do a full design on stream but I'm building a mood board for this particular insighting reference which is I want an animal that is maybe semi-reptilian semi-furry but, but whatever furry is probably a bad word to use there but I wanted to be four-legged I wanted to have a nice arching belly like a hound and the main feature the main like oh my goodness what about this feature is it's gonna have its lips retract to show its fangs right I want that to be the big thing so now that I look at this, so we're six minutes in, we can look at some more references. I want to look at sharks. I want to look at sharks that can really like, expand their lips. Um, not just that, that's the wrong thing. There we go. I want to look at uh, stuff like basking sharks. The ones that have those huge, huge mouths. Look at, that. look at how insane that looks. How is that even a real thing? Okay, if I can grab something in profile, I will. Otherwise, I can grab just about anything else. Um, I prefer profile because I'm going to be iterating in profile. It's just an easier way to iterate. Um, so I'm thinking ahead with this, but uh, if I don't, I can just I can just grab something like this. It's okay. I just want to straight draw it. How about yourself? Doing well, man. Doing well. My I'm I'm been covered in dog blood the entire day because my dog nicked his elbow on um, on something earlier today. So I was cleaning his wound and uh, dressing and whatnot because the. I can't bandage it because the idiot's gonna bite it off, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it was not a very good sight. He bled quite a, quite a bit, but he feels okay. He's not whimping, he's not, he's not moaning, he's, he can put pressure on it, it's not that bad. But um, but yeah, it, it was a kind of sucky situation. I don't like seeing my, my dogs, um, or my dog in this case, uh, in pain. Not very good, not a good feeling. I felt very sick after that. Like, I, I had no problem like putting my hand like on his, on his bleeding wound or whatever. But um, yeah, it, it sucked. Like right after I sat down after having a shower, it just felt horrible. Anyway, he's okay though. He's gonna be fine. Um, just needs to let it heal. Uh, okay, so animals with lips that retract. Does anything come to my mind? What about like snakes? Maybe it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to um, billow out. Maybe it could detach somehow, like in some sort of like jaw dislocation. So let's look at some pictures of snakes with dislocating jaws. So this is why you gotta watch the Discovery Channel, because otherwise finding a reference is gonna be difficult. I have this good habit that I've been keeping these days, um, which is whenever I see something really cool that I can um, draw inspiration from, I just save it. I don't seem to have any of those snake pictures here. How about a hippo? Hippos are good, right? Don't hippos have a crazy jaw angle, like 120 degrees of jaw? Open mouth. Maybe that'll give me a couple of things to work on. Don't wanna go too wide. But I don't want to go too, like, that's why I'm jumping from different animals, because I don't want everything to be from one animal. Otherwise, it's just going to look like variations of the same. That's really, really cool. What the hell? Look at this creature. How is it not the most deadliest thing alive? Oh, damn, animals are cool. Okay, so I don't want to go just animals, right? So I want to go a little bit crazy. Oh, James, you have your doggy now? Yeah, I have both my doggies. Image toolbar. i got to remember that. I'll grab another one from a hippo real quickly. I do want, ah, look at those, look at that goddamn, look at that mouth right there, what the hell? That's awesome. I love the way the gum's gonna come out, almost like an alien. 
The male hippos fight like that is crazy. I can't imagine, man. What a deadly creature. Let's look at some snakes. Snake, mouth, and let's keep it. Well, let's say open. Why not? Like, can I get like I like the fangs over there. I like the fact that they they have tissue around the fang. It's not a clear fang. It's just tissue around them, which is a kind of cool idea. Because oftentimes we don't like we don't vary the teeth enough, I guess, because it's just like hey, this is teeth. Teeth have this shape, and that's what teeth are going to be. I like the idea of it being uh, a little bit more varied than that. So maybe we can grab a couple of these. And then I want to grab some more profile shots, and we should be pretty much good to go, unless I want to throw in some like sea creatures in there as well. I kind of want to throw in some more sea creatures, and I'm going to be honest. Like, what about a hammerhead shark? What about a goblin shark? These are all things, right? These are all things with weird looking mouths. What's a fang? Fangs are the, um, are the venom injecting teeth. This fang. Dude, how amazing. I, I actually think a lot of snakes are kind of cute. A lot like boas, for example. These raptors are really cute looking. I like that mouth. Oh, that's cool. Look at those ridges, man. You can't come up with this stuff. You can't come up with this. Oh, you, maybe you can. I can't. <laughs> so I gotta steal it. That's so neat. Look at those ridges, man. Across the, across the snout. We gotta use that. We have to use that. That's so cool. What the hell is this? What even is that? I oh, mean, it's a duck, but... <laughs> Oh, that's a key. We are, we've actually almost drawn that image before on, on stream. Okay, last thing that we search for is uh, I want to look at goblin sharks because you always have to look at goblin sharks every single day. You wake up and you look at them, but they're freaky, freaky animals. With uh, these are some of the inspirations for the alien, for the alien um, with the retractable jaw inside. So you see that? So they can like push forward their mouth outside their lips, and it's so freaky looking. Do I have any images of that happening clearly? You see that little... See that? What? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> How cool is that? Hell yeah, okay, we gotta put some... <laughs> gotta put that in there. Uh, I'm looking for good pictures of it though. I don't, I don't have a good profile. Imagine that thing chase you. Oh, I would <laughs> just give up, I just let it eat me. Can I get a good, good picture of that though? Do I have to like... Nipping tool this? Um, what the fuck is this image right there? Let's just grab this one over here. I love letting new words. I can't wait to see the result of this piece. Yeah, I can't either. It's gonna be fun. I just want something to hint. Like, I don't even need anything at this point. I can iterate over and just figure out how it's gonna happen. But I just want to see, like, something to remind me at least to think about these sharks. Uh, I don't want to pick that one because of TOS. Because uh, it's all bloody and shit. Something of the sort, right? Just something... That, there you go, that's enough for me. That's sufficient. Just that jaw coming out. How freaky does that look? I think that's sufficient. That's sufficient for our iterations right there. Uh, so I have my hound body. I just want to get... Um, just some profiles of... Amphibious... Like, amphibians. In general, so like lizards of some sort, like more of a lizard. What's a cool looking amphibian? Like a no, no, let's just say lizard. See what comes up. That's kind of creepy. I want something with a bit, bit like longer, like longer joints, you know. And that's good. We're looking up um, some design references really quick. Nothing really speaks to me here. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'll grab a horse. Because you can't go wrong. The thing with tetrapods is that the anatomy of a tetrapod is always going to be relatively same, but the arrangement of musculature doesn't necessarily have to be the same. Like, for example, your, your terrace, major terrace minor can be a lot shortened or a lot longer depending on the animal. So um, it's good to just have something. Let's, uh, let's grab that one. That one seems fine. That one seems even better. Because really, I don't really care too much about the quality. All I really care about is I want a strong read um, because I'm going to be bashing over most likely. Okay, cool. We have everything we need. So let's jump back into Krita. Having a lazy day, doing nothing too outstanding. Well, you you are outstanding, so I don't have to worry too much about that. Let's grab everything and put it into... I think I just closed my chat. 
Oh, never mind. I just minimized it. Okay, so we need to grab everything so we can use it. So let's grab everything from our folder. And we'll put it into Creator really quickly. So we'll uh, put it as many layers. Let's do a quick arrangement to get a mood board out of this. And then we should be fine. So what is the timer at? So yeah, we, we finished our, our resource gathering in a decent amount of time. 15 minutes is all we need for, for one character. Okay, so let me just quickly... But none of these need to be too large. Because again, we're going to be painting... Well, it's, it's going to be silhouettes for the, for the beginning, so... I don't, I don't care about the quality too much. We're just going to be um, play around with this, or playing around with this real quickly. Okay. I just want to arrange them in a way that I can see all of them. So just a quick little mood board. So the ones in profile are going to be what I build the entire creature on. So I, I'm going to extract that particular picture. I'm going to build everything on top of that. Oh, that's so cool, that frill. We gotta put that frill in. Like, maybe the mouth will have, like, portions. So the ones that I like more, I'm gonna emphasize with just size. The ones I like more, I'm just gonna make it slightly larger. This is fine. I just need the profile on that one. There's a simple little arrangement here. I like this a lot. This is a very cool silhouette. So I'm gonna keep that down here, so I can see it uh, by a lot. This one's also pretty okay. Let me just put that over here. Just a bit of management. It's going to save me a lot of time in the future. I'm going out for some dinner. I will tune in later. No problem, man. See you in a bit. Have a good dinner. So let's put my basking sharks right over there. I like those ribs. You know, those rims in the middle. That's kind of cool. Oh, I'm going to put my phone on it. Sorry about that. Okay. Just a bit of management. That's that's actually pretty cool as well. Let's put that up there. I kind of want that. Oh, I can't believe you've done this. King Sidorak or Sidorak, welcome, man. We're gonna we're doing a design a design uh, stream today, so hopefully you enjoy that. I see things examples of things that I've designed in the past. You can pop a few in here. I'm not an expert in this, which is why I'm learning right now. But uh, I'll show you some stuff because uh, this is a new file. Here's some examples of a robot dude that I am currently working on. He's a kind of cool dude right there. And here's some character sketches right there. Sketches for a dude. And here's some sketches for uh, like a robot. The same robot that I did the orthographics for. Here's some vehicles. Stuff like this. PureF is an amazing tool for mood boards or having... Uh, yeah, PureF is good, but I don't really need PureF because Krita has uh, has it fairly inbuilt. I just need something on my canvas though. But uh, the, the nice thing about Krita is that I can keep all the references next to my canvas, so I don't particularly need it. But I, I would want something to just grab stuff on. That's the only like, lack of... Uh, it's the only thing that's a little bit of a disadvantage because I can't directly use my references because I need to be able to grab this and then bash over it. So I, I can't just look at them, I actually want to manipulate them and use them in the context of my picture. That's one of the disadvantages. Usually I'm okay. And plus I might be using this a few times in the future, so it's good to just do it. It's not efficient though, I'll, give, I'll grant you that, it's not efficient at all. But I can just put stuff on my, uh, on my sidebar if I need it, which is really cool. So I'm actually going to be grabbing a few of these big ones. That's kind of cool. That's one of my, uh, one of my silhouettes right there. Cool. We are almost done. Oh, that's so freaky looking, but it's so cool. Damn, nature. And we got a final basking shop reference. Like I said, the inciting thing on this entire process is going to be, so I think everything is visible. Uh, yeah, everything is, is fine. I'm just going to move that dog a little bit. Everything is okay. So I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just collapse. Which one's the dog right there? Oh, that guy over there. Okay. I'm just going to remove you slightly higher. Does PureF do like auto sorting? Because that would be a really cool thing to do. Autumn, how's it going? Shout out to Autumn, fellow streamer. How you, how you doing? Hope you're having a good day. I'm going to move you slightly to the bottom left. 
CJ Gladback, thanks for the raid, man. Appreciate you. Okay, let's make all of this into one layer. Control E. Control E. Cool. Now we have this for the end of time. Thanks for the raid, man. I appreciate that. I'll show you some more work in a second, but I hope you had a good stream. Let me quickly export this into a PNG. We'll call this mood board mouth or mood mouth. Welcome, guys. Good to see you. My name is Indian Bird, aka James. I am a study streamer. I stream studies, I stream learning art. <laughs> That's basically what I do here. Some examples of my work I can show you. I did a left handed stream yesterday where I drew one of my friends, Jen. <laughs> These are uh, mostly with my left hand. They're, they were okay. It was just a fundraising thing. One of my friends has carpal tunnel. So I was just raising um, I was just raising a little bit of money for her. But um, yeah, some examples of my character design stuff. This is a, a nun with concealed robot arms right there. Which, for some reason, I turned into a, an armored nun later on. Speaking of armor, some armor studies right there. You can see this one on the bottom left. Some dynamic animal studies. These are all done between an hour. Well, most of these are done under an hour. This one over here is two and a half hours. Study of a runner. My favorite subject ever, which is studying animals. I fucking love animals. They're beautiful. Especially two animals in a reference. Two lovey-dovey animals. I'm a big fan of that. And of course, I'm an artist, so you gotta draw some spice every, every now and again. But that's spice. I do a bunch of monster studies. A study of um, Bougaro. William Bougaro, aka Boogie Woogie. Study of um, one of his paintings. I was studying his process. So I was building up things as he would. So yeah, I hope you like my stuff, guys that uh, are new to the channel. Everything's better with armor. I tend to agree. Uh, armor on women are like tattoos and glasses on women. They just make them so much. Well, not, they don't make them better, but... You know, it's, it's definitely in line with my own preferences a bit more. I don't do it, by the way. Speaking of which. Makes it more fun to draw. Yeah, I definitely agree. What are you working on? Okay, so I want to grab... So this is basically this is my own personal taste here. But I like to grab a few things to just... Does Krita have an infinite canvas? Yeah, the, the fun thing about that is that um, the canvas is just this. So this is my manipulable canvas. I can only draw in this area. But I can grab every single thing that I just put on my canvas. I can put it outside my canvas. Just like this. And I just have it, you know? And this file size is still 13 megabytes. So I'm gonna just grab a few things that I, I really like. So basically I'm gonna grab this one because I, I, this was the inciting one, so I only have that in there. I can get rid of this. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Uh, it's one of the big things. Krita is not like super, super well optimized. I'm gonna get rid of my design stuff here because I don't need it. But it's not super well optimized. Um, but it is very good. Some of the features are goddamn great. And uh, I do like some of the brushes as well. It's a, it's a decent program, especially because it's free, my goodness. I was slowly 3D modeling a main character for an in-progress animation. Neat, do you wanna share? Have you ever thought of some tattoos you thought of? Oh, that wasn't a good, yeah, of course. They're definitely bad tattoos. I like, uh, I like this a lot. I'm going to be staring at that one a lot. I like this one a lot as well. Those lizard frills are awesome. Uh, this one, of, of course, I'm going to be staring at that one. Panda Powder, how's it going, dude? How's it going, Blake? I, how you been enjoying the uh, the streams? I try and give you a lurk when I can. I don't think I've seen you on recently. Um, I need these horses that can be done later. I'm designing a creature right now. I think a bit of a design. I absolutely love these, these like, Rhythmic kind of holes on the side of this guy's mouth. James, do you have tattoos? Nope, my body is uh, unfortunately tattoo free, but not for very long. I think that's it. I think those are the ones that I really like among all the ones. Look at how freaky that looks. How is that a thing? How is that a thing that's kind of related to us? I mean, I can. I guess I can kind of see it. Still going at it when I can. Only did a few streams last week. Well, I hope they've been enjoyable. Streaming is very, very fulfilling. It's a great. Uh, it's a great part of my life. And hopefully it is likewise out of yours. Did you read on William's process or did you have to guess on William's process? I looked at uh, art history and you know, rest restorationists and all these things. And I watched a bunch of videos on that. And after that, I just spitballed. Right. So the way that he did his block-ins, the way that he started his color base, 
uh, the way that he layered colors in, and that's how I kind of build up, uh, built upon it. Do I think that it's 100% accurate? No, but the thing is, I tend not to change a billion different things when learning something. I try to like pick one thing and then learn. So the main thing that I picked and focused on was the idea of how did he do his block in, and what did he use for like how did he lay in his bases, and then how did he build up color. So just very very like local, reasonable goals, and that lets me kind of improve much more. I feel like I don't like the idea of just like doing everything when you paint in, in terms of improvement. That is, I don't like the idea of going into a painting and say, okay, with this painting. I'm going to get better at every aspect of painting. I don't believe in it. It's a it's a weird thing. I like focusing. Incidentally, if I come upon something else that's relevant to some other, you know, fundamental concept, great, right? If I'm doing value and I learn about edges, great. But I'm doing it to learn value. That's the kind of idea that I usually go for. And I think it's a much more achievable idea. That thing looks like it'll eat us all. I know. I'm, I'm hoping to be able to design something like that. It's a very in progress. Just time to work on the hair. Obviously, no clothes or shoes yet. Here's the alarming 3D model so far. Let me see. What do you got for me? Went along well, I think. It looked really good. The 3D is great. I use so much 3D in um, in ideation for compositions. I do a disgusting amount of bashing because it's just easier. It's just way, way easier. Like a lot of like character three forks, I build it on top of a basic 3d model all the time and i feel like it's a much like it's a much more efficient way to to work especially because i have deadlines to have to, to to meet so doing stuff like for example this one is clearly on a 3d model it's a very fun it's a very very basic character i need to do a bunch of um i had to figure out a lot of things based on the markings that are going to go on it because i wanted him to have like an arabic kind of feel to it so i want to have a bunch of like you know flowing glyphs and characters so I'm, this is just a, a png the work in progress is somewhere else um, but yeah, I really want to experiment with a bunch of like glyphs and stuff on them. So this is like a really basic base, uh, or like a basic structure for it. Same thing for this one. I built it off 3D. And I think a lot of these silhouettes as well, a lot of my character sketches as well, are off of 3D. And even my, um, my comp stuff, right? Like I showed a comp earlier today, so I was helping somebody out with a commission. And this comp, uh, this Pokemon comp here, this was done based on a 3D, like based on 3D assets. I bashed in a couple of uh, Pokemon because I couldn't be bothered like drawing something out for a, for a 15 minute like bash uh, or 15 minute comp. I didn't, didn't want to draw Pokemon, so I grabbed some stuff from Sketchfab. Uh, if you want to see the assets, by the way, that could be cool. Uh, let me show you. If you're interested to see exactly what I mean by grabbing assets, uh, where do I have this stored? Maybe if I open up the file. You can see an example of that. Yeah, see, like, like this, for example. Like, I wanted the Kingdra to have to be above the horizon line, so therefore I reached, I angle the camera to look from um, down to up, and I grab this reference over here, and I just bash it in. Ba bam Right? Because I don't want to waste time. Of course, in the final image, is it going to look anything like this? Hell no. Right? It's way too static. It's, it's just far too static. I want it to be bending and twisting and turning. But... Like, do the work when it's time to do the work. Don't overwork in a step, right? You don't want to spend way too much time in a particular instant because it's just inefficient. It's an inefficient uh, process, right? And I'm still getting better at that. To say that uh, my process is efficient right now is a joke, right? I'm so slow. But uh, if, I, if I stop thinking like this, I'm going to be even slower. Okay, so we are done assembling the mood board. We have everything on one layer. So now we can start to drag things and start to ideate. So I'll show you how we do that based on some reference and based on painting. This is me drinking water, by the way. Sorry. This is how we do it. That's 28 minutes in. Not bad. So I got my first little reference right there. So let's just Control c Control v that, and I have it on a separate layer. Alright, so what we're going to do is a really, really quick thresholding. So I'll threshold that. I think I'm the wrong layer. I want to threshold this high. That's weird. Oh, am I in a selection maybe? That's probably why. Always hit Control Shift A, by the way. If something's not working, Control Shift A is probably your answer. So I want to get that silhouette of the dog really quickly. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to get that outside silhouette really quickly, like that. 
I'm gonna hit it with the color of the alpha. This is probably a bad ref to start out with for this. Because I'm gonna have to do a lot more work. And that's how we, we start off. I'm gonna select a single brush for this entire process, um, which is gonna kind of define the shape language. But let's say I'll pick um, let's pick something squarish, something square or triangular for this whole thing. I think that'll be a good idea. Okay, so I'll get rid of the excess here. So we just start out right over there and I'll paint over certain things. This is not actually the most clearest in terms of reference. We can keep it for the time being, but it's not super clear as to like exactly where the hands and everything else is going, but we can keep it for the time being because I don't really mind. Okay, so the idea is this. I want to create a character with a large mouth, right? So let's just start over there. So I'm going to do one quick little thing before we continue, which is I want to raise the color of the background. It's way too dark. I don't like how dark it is. There you go, that's better. Okay, let me just quickly fill in these. Control shift i to invert selection, by the way. Also, if you're working in a program that allows you to store two values, a fun little thing to do is you, you can select one value, you hit X, and I can select the background value, which means I can always go back and forth. So I can, I can hit it with the main value, and I can hit it with the background value. Main value, background value, main value, background value. So it's like a fun little way of just being efficient at this particular stage. So now I'm just going to be painting with a large brush, and we'll figure out some ideas, right? So I know that the head's going to go right over there, and I want to add that large little mouth right there. I want to give him like a tail, for, for example. Let's give him an interesting looking tail. And a lot of the idea is going to be held together. It's going to be held together by the fact that I have the silhouette to work off of. So I'm going to use the basking shark for a second, because I want to use something for the mouth at the very beginning. So let's just use the basking shark and we'll get some of the main features out of there. So I want the nose to go like that. I want this to kind of curve around just like that. And I want to have rows of alternating light and dark, right? Light, dark, light, dark. Right over there. And we can even throw in maybe a fin towards the side. So again, it's easy to just go back and forth. Kind of get that tail going over there. So I, my silhouette's always going to be really, really basic. I do not spend all that much time in the silhouette phase. I want to give a bit more clarity towards where the legs are going and maybe add just a bit more darkness in there. I'm going to keep these as maybe um, like a 20-80 separation of light and dark. So there's going to be 20% lights and 80% darks. And keep things like that. And that's really all I'm going to do for this one. Keep the first one nice and simple. I don't want to focus on anything. Just add that little shape in there. And I don't really like that tail even, so we can just go over that just once. Make it look a bit more interesting. I kind of like the gills as well, so let's throw some gills on there to the side. And that kind of complements the language of having those three stripes. You can put some three stripes right there, maybe, as an idea. And maybe give it a bit of, more, bit more of a longer tail. And call that our first silhouette. I want these to be grounded, by the way. Running that is a good idea. So I end up with something that looks, looks like this. Is it interesting? Is it good? No. But that's fine. Let me continue. Did I just straight up cut that? No, thank goodness. That would be horrible. I was worried that I just completely got that out of my, uh, my mood board. That would be a bad situation. Let's grab this one. Control C, Control V. Set about the current layer. Same idea. So this is my initial, just grabbing my silhouettes and then playing around with them. So we'll do some straight painting in a second. Same issue as before. We control shift A to get rid of our selections. We'll threshold this. Just to get an overall silhouette. Actually, I want to invert this one. And then we'll color to all for it. Just like that. And now I have this beautiful thing to work off of. And let's let's do one more thing. Let's grab what good skeletal boys I know. Let's grab um let's grab this one over here. Ah, this is gone. You're gonna hate the stream by the way, I'm saying I can tell you already. I'm gonna grab this little frittle right here. Let's grab that separately. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Grab that separately, just like that. Put it on a layer. 
This is the exact same thing over here with filter, adjust, threshold. Because I want to get that shape out of the way. Let's threshold it. And I want to invert this one as well. What, is it cheating stream? Yep. It absolutely is. Let's invert this. Yep, not that. Let's invert that and we'll do the same thing. We will bring it down into a transparent layer, just like that. And I want to grab that. And I want to start superimposing it. Let's just grab this. Put it on the same layer. There's way too much detail for this to be a, a good silhouette, but it's fine. We don't really care about that. Because we can always paint over quite easily. Grab it here, and I'm going to put it on top of this dog just to begin with. Just so I have something to work with, you know? Looks only cool. <laughs> What's going on over there? Jesus. So I have these nice little flow shapes now that I can start expanding upon. Arguably, I could have just done this without, but that's fine. I like have I like a little small face right there. But remember, these are supposed to be mouth, by the way. This is supposed to be a, a mouth, not a not a frill. So I should probably have reversed this, just to indicate the frill right there, really really quickly. I'll simplify some of the shapes here. I feel like this could have been done quicker by blocking it in. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm just getting warmed up. You'll see the benefit of this. In a second. Lock it in really quickly. I have my entire pose set up. Let's throw in that tail. Looks cool. I like the arch in the back. That's awesome. It isn't always a goal. Sometimes cheating is a stone reward. There you go. I like that one a lot. Cool. Let's grab that and put it next to everything else, right there. Looks good. Okay, so I'm going to grab the same one again, because we can work with this one for quite a long time. This is a cool looking reference, so Control c Control v We grab that really quickly. And I want to integrate it for the mouth. So let's just quickly we'll, we'll block this head in, give it a nice, like, like large looking head. So now I'll really go ham on the basking shark kind of idea. So I want to quickly draw in those three gills right there. And I'm going to put in the idea of the mouth right over there. in those ribs that we see. Where's my boss job reference? What am I missing there? The snoot. I need to put that snoot in. That looks kind of cool. Hell yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's throw in some ridges to the back. Just to kind of offset the... Uh, we have like a triangular sort of shape language in the front, so let's just kind of offset that. Maybe I prefer to do this with selection. I'm gonna offset the triangle a little bit if it makes any sense to. That would be this is gonna be a really cool script. This might be one of our finals right there. I like that one a lot. So this, this takes me very little time, but we get a lot from it. Let's continue really quickly. Can we, we'll do one more with this one. This time I want to go based on the chimp. And let's do something really quickly. Let's make this um, this front, we'll exaggerate the size of it. Because I want to be playing with the big medium small as well. To really exaggerate the front side of this. And that already looks so cool, man. Holy shit. Go. All right, bring this front a little bit in. Let's get rid of the tail on this one. 
right? Let's just uh, we'll make it a low, like a low tail, just to balance it out. Okay, so we'll use the A preference for this one. So what I want to look for is a beautiful, beautiful mane all around. And I want to indicate that curled lip somehow. So we get that curled lip. And I will indicate that one with a white. Again, the idea is to not ever get any get specific in any of these. But I just want enough information to tell me where everything goes. Right, it's probably an easier way of doing this actually. I'm doing a lot of like painting and then painting out, which is just fun because it lets me keep, lets me keep a nice large brush through most of this process. Now I'm going a little bit inwards for my own benefit because I want to throw in some of these smaller lines. I want to make this looking like a nice little mane so I can throw in some selection here. Give me some idea to its texture. That looks kind of cool. I just want to indicate that um, that curved lip a bit more though. The curved lip needs to really be like set into stone. Should have gotten a profile picture of that because I don't exactly know how it looks. But I'll just add like a, a placeholder, let's say. I'll curl it back like that. Assuming that's how it uh, actually happens. And can I put in some more chin characteristics to this? The like, really vertical head? That might be kind of cool, right? So let's push that vertical, the verticality of the head really quickly. Like that. I know it looks strange, but the point of the stage is to do strange things okay so we spent maybe 10 minutes and we've got a bunch of already interesting looking enough silhouettes let's switch to a different base shall we this is important to keep the base fresh to control e this now let's grab this i want some white accenting elements on this one i kind of like that heart thing that he has over there so let's just do this with this one right let's give him stripes towards the bottom i have to look like this so that same kind of pattern that I saw on the monkey. Let's grab that. We'll put a few of those on there. Of course, I don't want it to obstruct the musculature. There we go. Okay. So we got four based on that hound. Let's grab another one. Let's grab this lizard. It looks fucking cool as hell. I love this lizard. It looks awesome. Same process. So now we get this back into our black and white idea. So we threshold it into an appropriate amount. Just enough for us to get that silhouette out of there. So enough to get rid of the background is the idea. Uh, something like that is somewhat sufficient. Because I have just about the entire silhouette over there. That's good enough. Let's get rid of the excess white. Okay, let me just selection off portions that we don't need. Or we can just paint it out if you wanted to. Nice and large. So I'm using a square brush, which does help a little bit, because I like to, I like to use a lot of selection in uh, in this particular process, and it helps because selections are going to give me square edges anyway. So this is my lizard one. So I need to just spend a little bit of time to simplify what I'm seeing right over there. So let's simplify the body real quick. We get this beautiful pattern here. So we simplify the fin to one large light shape right there because again we don't want to be bogged down into details right now but i'm just kind of getting an interesting shape out of this lizard let's just draw his leg in a regular right over there an impression of his leg at least and it's worth worth it to me to spend a bit of time over here at this particular time because at the end of it i get this thing that i can start working off of right i get this kind of really really um interesting looking breakdown of light and dark which is wouldn't be a shape that i would arrive at if it was just straight painted 
And then on top of that, I can start straight painting, which is cool. Okay, so this is what I arrived with. That's my base. So let me just get back back into the scene. Maybe I can start playing around with it. Okay, so the first thing that I'll, I'll do is I'm going to incorporate this snake into things a bit more. That's going to be my first thing. On top of this one, though, I kind of want to keep this original just around. So I'll keep the original right over here. And I'll start working off of it. So let's just put that in there real quickly. And we'll make a copy of it. Bring it back up here. So I want to give this a lot more musculature. And maybe even give it um, a similar kind of fit. Maybe the arch concept has been overdone. And maybe we'll make this bipedal. And we'll give him some beefier legs. So in that respect, let's bulk up his lower body really quickly. So let's grab that. Raise the size. That looks, <laughs> that looks really weird already. That's, that's kind of cool. Okay. And to counterbalance, we got to increase the length of the tail. Increase that tail really quickly. I kind of like the idea of keeping it straight. That's kind of neat. Like we could bevel this, um, but should we though? Like that's a bit too much. Uh, to throw in a little bit of beveling here. Maybe like a little bit, right? It's a small amount. What tool is that? Jesus. The wrong key button there. There you go, that's nice. Go up a little bit. There we go. I kind of like this uh, this whole effect right there. Let's, in let's just add on that maybe. Let's just do that all across the entire body. So we'll have one continuous fin going across the entire lizard. Something like that, maybe. And then we could even cut the legs off, maybe. Cut the front legs off. Do I want to keep it like very T-Rex-y? Like that's, uh, that's the real idea, right? Do I want to keep it like a T-Rex and have it have this kind of characteristic? Maybe, maybe not, right? We'll see. Okay, let's address the jaw really quickly because again, that's going to be the feature. That's the main feature of this creature. Is that mouth? So the mouth needs to be interesting. Let's just start with that idea, which is we'll keep the eye right over there, and I'll start with that basic kind of snaky shape that it, it goes into a converging kind of dagger shape right there, so right there and right there. And I want to add a beautiful ridge right there, so it, it goes into a snub little nose, so it squares out right over there, and we get that. Beautiful alternating rows of light in there. Even though these kind of count as details, I kind of want to show it right over there. And I want to add those fangs. So not just teeth, but I want to add those fangs like that. It's kind of neat. Also, let's just simplify the head region right there really quickly. We'll throw in beautiful eyes. And I want to just resize that head really quickly, looking a little bit too large. Keep the ridge towards the bottom, maybe. I'll add just a bit of meat in these legs. Bringing back that spine a little bit more. So one that lovely, lovely ridge spine. And maybe we can, add, as an afterthought, put in slightly kind of underdeveloped, shriveled little hands right there. Cool. Well, his legs aren't crazy. I'm not crazy about, but again, I'm not going to spend all my time fixing a pair of legs, like, even if it's like really stick-like. I think it might even look cool. Right over there. Forty-eight minutes. Let's do one more with this dude. Let's do something different with him. We control C, control V. Maybe I'll use him again later. Let's bring this dude up here. Let's give this guy a massive head. A really, really big head. Let's turn it this way. And we'll try and make it work. We'll try and make it work within reason, right? So in order to have this massive head, he needs to have some amount of. Uh, of body to uh, make that work somehow. So let's just do this. 
Let's uh, let's grab, let's grab this dude over here. Let's grab his body real quickly. Let's do it like that really quick. And let's give him a third pair of legs. Let's give him uh, six limbs. All this cheating hurts is also very interesting. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how you do, right? Give him an extra pair of legs really quickly. In a way that makes some amount of sense. So I'm just doing that to get the interesting shape out of there. So now that I have the shape, I can start painting in. The thing is, the issue with like just doing direct painting a lot of the time is that you do the same thing over and over again. And I want to have incidental things that make it look interesting so right over there and i want to br bring back the frill of this one so i'll just grab the frill from here big frill just like that just place that beautiful little gecko tail right there and again we need to do something for the mounts let's bring back our goblin shark idea over here where's our goblin it's somewhere over here right where's the goblin shark oh there he is so this one this one seems like a prime candidate to try our goblin shark idea so we'll first simplify like that get rid of the detail on his head right and i want to have a beautiful jaw coming out there right over there so we simplify that the thing is with simplifying the white with just one value is that i won't be able to see half the things that i do so i'll add a little bit of dark right underneath so i see where that jaw ends right i want to get that interesting looking structure right there so it goes up and it goes around into a triangle right over there. You see I'm flipping just to kind of get a new perspective on things. And I want to put that lower jaw in right now as well. Ooh, you know what would be cool? If these, these creatures kind of feed on the floor or something of the ocean or the floor of a swamp or whatever, so their mouth kind of goes all the way to the floor, that'd be a kind of cool idea. Okay, the most important thing over here is I get this, this clear like visual indicator, which is it, it slopes in, right? So it goes outward and slopes back in. So this needs to be done like that. So giving that, that little snub nose right there, the snub nose into the big teeth. And we'll put the lower jaw in there as well. Um, I would like to have bashed that in, to be honest. Um, it would have been a little bit better for time. So just make sure that these jaws are somewhat complementary because I want them to fit together. So we'll make them make a little bit more sense than I have already right over there. So we'll do the same thing on the bottom. I'll have, that, have it whited out a little bit. Just to kind of indicate where this jaw goes. And I want to have it have that really, really cool characteristic of it. It goes into those little barbs right there. It goes into little barbs of teeth as opposed to like what you would expect, which is like massive teeth. It goes into slight little barbs. Right? And we have that really, really like obnoxiously high eye. We have a really high eye over there. It looks so freaky. What the hell? Also, a little tip for creatures is that um, the smaller the eye, you draw, the smaller you draw the eye, the larger the creature is going to seem. So I drew a small eye there, meaning this creature is going to look a lot larger than it would. And just as an ancillary feature over here, let's throw in some, um, let's throw in some gills maybe, or throw in some idea of like wrinkles or something. Cool, that's a really cool silhouette right there. Nice. It needs a little bit something something, but. As far as big mouth creatures go, I think that one looks okay. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for that particular lizard design, because it's a bit limiting with the way the silhouette is. But I'm going to use elements of this throughout my, the rest of my silhouette process. Okay, let's grab another one, a new a new base. So you see, I work in bases, it's kind of like how I like to work, but no, there's no necessity for that to be the case. Uh, let's grab a horse. Horses are nice. I wish I picked a better horse picture, because some of this is going to be obscured. But it's going to be a much more muscular build in general, which might look cool. So I'll grab the reference, we'll just clean it up a little bit. And then we'll... Let's just um, select around the tail, because that's going to be lost in the thresholding. Okay, and then we will just get the silhouette from here. 
I don't want to include those little patches. They don't really matter to me all that much. Just as clean as I can get it, right over there. I get it down, back down into this basic, basic read. So now we have the horse silhouette to use. Let's clean it up slightly. So again, same idea. I want to keep the ground plane in there. I'll keep the ground plane in there. Okay, let's get back, get everything else back in here. Let's combine these two things. I have about six minutes left for my remaining reference, so my remaining uh, silhouettes. So I'll keep my horse right over here. And let's get right over you. So grab it. So now we have all these elements that we can start using. So let's grab Basking Shark Mouth real quick. We'll grab the, the, uh, the Basking Shark Mouth. Because it's, it's fairly well drawn over there. So we want to integrate this somehow. Let's do it over there to begin with. Just do it really generically, really ham-fistedly. Maybe it results in something good. I kind of like something that's happening over here, which is I have this beautiful ridge kind of pattern going through the entire the entire horse, which I kind of dig. So maybe the entire head can be reduced in size really quickly. So we reduce the size of the head. But I like the idea of having that that same kind of stripey pattern going through the entire, like the entire thing is going to be transparent. That looks like a cool idea. So I'll do that really quickly. As if this entire area follows that same kind of ridge pattern. Okay, so of course I need to amp up the beefiness of the front to support this idea. So we'll grab this. Well, not, not, not that like that. We'll grab this area. So the thorax, the shoulder, all that stuff needs to be increased in size. We'll make it slightly larger. And to compensate, we'll bring this lower. So it ended up looking something like a giraffe almost. Yep, lost my white there for a second. This one looks kind of cool. I like this one a lot. Just follow that horse silhouette a little bit. I kind of don't like it arching this way, you know? I don't like this arch. This arch is weird. Um, because it doesn't make any sense that I have this gesture and I have this gesture. I want this gesture and go into this gesture. So I'm gonna bring back the curve. It just seems to make a lot more sense. Also in general, when you have a, a quadruped that's front supported, like a horse for instance, uh, what's gonna happen generally speaking is that it needs to have its back be well supported. It needs, to, it needs the back to be straight because it has to support a lot of weight. So generally speaking, it's just a good idea. Just in terms of realism. Not that realism needs to be pushed here, but it's just something to keep in mind. That's why horses are the way they are. I'm gonna cut the tail on this one. And maybe we can bring a little bit of that back here. This is a as a design philosophy, right? We studied design rules. That's the rule of three right there. I like that a lot. That's kind of cool. Uh, you know what? I feel like it, it might be overdoing it in terms of like cool things. But why don't we just throw in this tail for the fuck of it, right? Why don't we just throw in that tail? Because we this tail kind of looks cool, so maybe we could use it. Uh, this, I'm running out of space. Okay. okay, you stay here for the time being. You need to go smaller. You need to go smaller real quick. Let's put this tail on here. Now that's an interesting design right there. That looks cool. I mean, you can forgive my horse anatomy. But hey, it's not a horse, so it is something to forgive. Let's do one more with the horse. So you got this guy over here. So I like the fact that since I'm using the same, I'm using my own references, my own paintings back into my own pieces, so I get a lot of interesting shapes over here. So I'm not doing the strict bash. You can strict bash all of these. Do it just by bashing and rearranging. Uh, but I like to put a lot of painting in it as well. Yeah. I beheaded that horse accidentally. That's a crime. Okay, get over there, would you? There you go. Good boy. Let's grab this horse again, because we can do a few more things with this. Okay, so control E that. Um, hidden layers, excuse me. 
Okay, so what haven't we used in terms of like the interesting jaw designs? We used the snake, we used the basking shark, we used the goblin shark. We didn't do all that much with the frills, but the frills is going to be more of a design thing, so that's okay. It's going to be more of like a like a surface detail thing. Did we miss anything in our in our image board? I guess not. So we can just keep going on the same ideas, right? So I did that one with the basking shark. Let's do this one with the, with the goblin shark. So I have my goblin shark head already here. Let's grab that really quickly. We put that on top. I'm gonna make this guy have a really small head and a really like giant body, let's say. Even though giant mouth, right? So giant mouth creature you'd, you'd expect it to have. You know what? Let's do it this way. Your your the end of your mouth's gonna go right over there. And I'm, I'm just gonna make that work. I'm gonna give you a giant ass mouth. So this is gonna work. So your skull has to go back here. You need to have a big masseter to support this. So this is going to have to be blocked out into a masseter. So... It goes like that. And I'm going to really amp up the detachment here. So your detachment is going to be like that. And this one's going to be here. do it this way so it's a little bit different than it's not different per se it's not like i invented this but it's going to be slightly different for example i silhouette and design uh almost the opposite to somebody like angevir for example angevir would spend a lot of time on the silhouettes i would just spend a lot of time on sketches so it's, it's the same amount of time i think ultimately spent on the design but i prefer to like spend minimum amount of time in my uh, my silhouettes so i get a lot of them out there so again we'll fill this in really quickly and I want to get that characteristic goblin shark kind of... I like that crookedness, you know? That crookedness is really cool. We'll amp that in really quickly. And I want to throw in those really freaky looking teeth. And get a lot done there. And now we need to make this work somehow for the legs. Like, how we need to support this somehow as a creature. Oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. The big big, how's it going, dude? Bizarre, good to see you. What's up, my man? So let's grab those legs from there really quickly. Put those down here. Ooh, hello. We may have just found a solution right there. I'm good at just work. What you working on right now? What's the commission? Doing well, man. Doing well. Just uh, had some problem with my with my doggies earlier today. One of them had a, a bleeding elbow. So I had to be covered in dog blood for a while. But yeah, he's doing okay. He's fine. He's eating. He, he can even put pressure on his leg, which is what makes me feel okay about it. Because I thought that he would... Had a, because the amount of blood that he lost was kind of severe, but... Um, he's okay. Like, he can put pressure on it. He can walk around. He can get up. Fine. So I guess he's all right. I want to bring back this ridge right there. That's a cool little ridge. Let's grab that ridge. We'll put it down here. Very nice. Some fast illustrations, some modeling, some weapon designs. Yeah, you told me about the weapons. You gonna be? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be illustrating these. I'm just spending uh, about half an hour on silhouettes, and then I'll bring them into, into character sketches. That, that guy had two heads for a second. Is that an idea? Is that an idea right there? Can we have two heads? Ah, fuck it, no. I want a single head. The uh, the idea behind this is we, we want big mouth. We want big mouth characters. You know what? I just realized I did nothing with my original light, my original picture, the inside thing picture, the one with the dog's mouth. You know why? Because this fucking basking shark was hiding it. I did nothing with this picture at the end of the day. <laughs> because I need something to counterbalance this little, this this head. So uh, I, need, I need something there. So tail is the, the logical idea. Let's give him a big crocodile, a crocodilian tail, like that. It's like a counterbalance tail. Leaf Lord, I know, right? I like a head on the tail too sometimes. You want to put a head on the tail, Iris? That's that's high level right there. That's too high level for us. That's too hot. Let's just segment that really quickly. Because it's, it's more about giving myself an indication of what's there. And uh, towards the end, let's just give him a big old, big old chest. A big old chest to support that big old head. Like a new? Like a new? 
What do you mean? What are you talking about, abs? Okay, that's enough for the horses. Let's do just one, a few more. Let's do a few more just because I want to get that dog idea out of the way because I feel bad now. We didn't put that in there. It's okay, Iris. He'll, he'll get there. Uh, do I want to make this a horse base? Yeah, fuck it, man. We, we need some more horse bases in here. So I'll just use my horse for this. Grab it here. Japanese mythical creature, monkey face. Tiger body and snake for a tail. Oh, like a chimera. Or, a, or a, not a mantico, it's a chimera, right? Got a lion head, a goat head. That kind of thing. Okay, so this is going to be the last one. Uh, I want to first put that big little area for the jaw right there. It's going to have like that big hood. Let's keep this uh, somewhat horse silhouette like. Uh, but I want to have... So we've had a lot of front loaded animals. Let's have a back loaded animal really quickly. So it's going to be like that. It's going to have... Let's, we just have to make it work somehow, right? That's the idea. So we ask questions later. We make it work first. Give it those large, large legs for no reason. For no good reason right there. How about it has large legs to support the head, which is very low. It looks like, like Scooby-Doo searching for clues. How about like that? Maybe that's how it walks around. You don't know. Don't judge. Right? So I want that, that mouth to be hanging to the floor, basically. And let's throw in those legs. So maybe the legs look like that now. So really, really bent legs that kind of crawl over the floor. So now they're going somewhere. And this guy is going to be the dog now, so I've got to give him a nose and widen his out right over there. Let's give him like a doggy, kind of like a furry tail this time, so it pl plumes out like that maybe. There. Those legs are <laughs> still very horse-like. <laughs> it's, it's reading a bit too strongly as a horse, but that's okay. Alright, so I want to give some indication to myself, even though you can't see all that much in profile. I just want to give some indication to myself of what's happening over here. I'm just going to draw those teeth in really quickly. Because otherwise I don't even, I, I wouldn't even know what this is. So I want to have some, see how powerful that selection is by the way? Holy shit. That's a powerful selection tool. Oh, this, this guy also has ears by the way, so we'll give him um, lighter ears to go backward. Because I want to be, I want to have something to kind of show me where the head ends. So the head's gonna end right over there. Let's give him two years, hell yeah. Dude, I didn't do anything with horns, man. Feels bad. Where are the horns on any of these? I can't I can't go back and put them now because you know, the time for that is gone. Because everything that you do needs to have like a language, right? Like if you have a Japanese dude designing and he has like particular elements to his armor, you can't just like invent something and put it there. You wanna have some some, some sort of coordination. It still looks like a Dark Souls boss already. I'm gonna dig it. You know what? Fuck it. You're gonna have a you're gonna have a long tongue, because I feel like it. Okay, that's gonna be my dog. I actually don't like that one at all. That one's a shitty one, but that's why we do so many. Also, not enough um, lighter values in that one. Let's, uh, let's let's make this this portion of your light. You'll have a like a front light, like a dorsal area that's lighter. It goes into your legs. And I can also use this to indicate the texture of the fur as well. You have lighter right over there. And let's just say that the front side of your of your back legs as well goes into the light. It could be interesting. Okay, well that's my silhouettes right there, done in well within time. So from here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, we gotta choose three to do sketches. <laughs> Take a little bit of a break now while we think about it. So, like I said, the first one's always the shittiest, so it's why I spent the least amount of time on that because I don't even care about it and it started getting better.
Let me see how it's... Oh, that's freaky. <laughs> it's a cat dog. Okay, let's pick the ones that I like. I like um, I like this one. I'll put this on a separate layer. That one's cool. I like uh, I like all the basking shark ones. I think that those just look really really neat. Five, six, and nine. One, two, three, four, five. You want this one? We can do that one. Yeah, it looks cool. Two, three, seven, and nine. You like two? Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, you want seven as well? I'm going to be doing seven. Sounds cool. Let me just number these, by the way. People know which, which one's which. So I'm picking these ones. I, I like this one. This is my pick. I like one. One's cool. Let's say Abs' pick is uh, is five. Hey Jets, how's it going, dude? You're designing creatures with a big mouth. I kind of want this dude as well. I like I like this dude's big fucking mouth. <laughs> He's huge. He's got that very like crazy goblin shark mouth. If Iris and Iris, if you guys had one pick, which would you pick, which would you choose? Yeah, it was just one pick. This is mine. I want to do this one. I think he looks awesome. Dude, these are gonna be so fun to do sketches of. My goodness. Eight's head and nine's body. Eight's head and nine's body. Really. I can do an additional one for you. I doubt this is how what you miss it. I think you wanted it to be turned. That would make more sense. Look at to see you, Jets. How's the art coming along? How's that piece for your dad? It's doing okay. Like that, Abs? This guy's got a really weird body, holy shit. I don't want to just cut this off for a second. He walks around like those guys, those, um, those tongue things from Resident Evil. The liquors or whatever they're called. He just looks down to fuck now. Made some good progress last night. Just have some touch-ups and value adjustments. Cool. Nine's head with seven's body. Iris, my goodness. Nine's head with seven's body. Really? I, I really like seven. 
Seven some boy right there. We could we could try that, why not? Well, I can't carry the ridges anymore, or can I? Let's just, uh, just do it this way. Yeah? So we're gonna have to do something about his legs, but that's gonna- it's a, it's a cool silhouette, I'll give you that. Go with this one? Okay. We're gonna have to play around with the proportions a little bit, but this will work. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay, let's do our Hall of Fame really quickly. We have this dude. And we have that dude. So let me get rid of these really quickly. Oh, you have not been collapsed, my good sir. What layer are you on? Oh, I see. Now I have you. Okay, so we have number one right there. We have this dude. Cool. We have number two, which is that dude. And we have number three, which is this dude. Is this number three? Those are our final picks. Good variation? I think so, yeah, definitely. Okay, so that means I can get rid of a lot of these references. <laughs> this is fun. Dude, the sketching is going to be really fun. Okay, so I need my Balskin Shock references right there. I need my Goblin Shock reference right over there. I need this Lizard Frill. I need this one. I need this one. Of course, I need this one. Uh, I don't need my Pose references anymore. I can get rid of those. Uh, I do need I need I do need this dog over here. I do need this horse over here for musculature. Can you post it here on the Discord? Yeah, I can. Uh, Balskin Shock right over there. Am I missing anything? I just want some of them for the muscles uh, because I want to put some of those into the sketch. Do I have a dog muscle one? There we go, that's my dog muscle one right there. Nice. I need this, this, uh, the hippo is pointless. Uh, did the mandrel make it in there? It did not, so that goes away. This, this, that one didn't make it in, that one didn't make it in. That one didn't make it in. Uh, this one, I don't need. I don't need this, I don't need this. Just kind of doubling down right now. What we need. Okay. Let me just get all these on, on one layer. I'm gonna post them in the Discord. Oh, 
Let's just keep a good habit real quick. Let's, let's label this. Can you say now when it's a design thing I put my name in there? That's in there. Put it in the study channel. Uh, let's grab one of these. Let's do this one first, because I'm excited for it. Put it in the new layer. Oh, goodness gracious me. <laughs> How's it going? Good to see you guys. <laughs> Jen, thank you for the raid. Very turn, man. Welcome back. Mr. Random Knees. Jen, how's it going? DT, Infinite Destiny. Good to see you guys. My name is Indiana Bro, aka James. I am a study streamer. I try to teach and learn art on Twitch, so it's an education channel. But if you'd like to see some, some of my work, here's some examples. I drew uh, Jen yesterday. This is the lovely individual that rated us. Jen was a really good sport and let me uh, draw her for my left-handed stream. So the majority of these two pieces was done with my left hand. So obviously uh, it has a lot to be desired. I also did this portrait of Jen a few days ago. Uh, so I've been drawing a lot of her lately, just out of coincidence though. Uh, and some other work if you'd like to see it. These are some portraits of my mods. If you see just abs or dark twilight, that's just abs, that's dark twilight. Some design stuff. This is a, a nun that has concealed deadly robot arms right there. See those arms in the back? Those were cool. Here's some armor. That's all done under an armor right there. I can't believe you've done this. Some animals that are in love. Some Minas Tirith, not Minas Tirith, I'm sorry, but some Lord of the Rings studies right there. Some horses, some spice. Do all, all kinds of stuff. Hopefully you guys like my content. This is a master, it's a master study, I'm sorry, by, uh, by Bulgaro. But it's good to see you guys. Thank you for the follow. And yeah, if you'd like to learn more about art, i try to make this a good place for that to happen. Azar, how's it going? Oh, we were talking about you earlier. So we are designing a creature with a large mouth today. And at the end of 30 minutes of silhouetting, we have some candidates right here. So we have this this here big old, this, this mouth over here with like a lizard tail with some striations of the neck. We have a bipedal one, which has adder like side little striations right there on the mouth with some fangs. And we have my favorite over here, which is like this weird basking shark hound dog, which I really like. So uh, it's gonna be a really fun thing. I'm gonna be Moving over to the sketch side of this, if you guys aren't familiar with design process, uh, the way that I'm going to be doing it is like this. So I started with the silhouettes, so something like this, and we got our final silhouettes. So we are currently at, we're at this stage right now. Let me grab an example for you. So we're at this stage. So I have all my silhouettes for whatever I want to draw. And now I'm going to be bringing that into this phase, which is my sketch phase. A bit more detail, a bit more flourish. Can really show some uh, ideas out there that kind of idea i gotta get up and stretch and yeah i know i definitely definitely go go stretch you've been streaming for a while i know it's late for you there don't worry about it and thanks for the raid i do appreciate that if you guys aren't following jen he is incredible fantastic streamer go check out her work and uh if my mods can put her instagram link in the chat and if you have anything that you'd like to share definitely do so I do appreciate you guys coming by and uh, and being so kind so thank you for those follows and i hope you enjoyed the stream and see you want. Hey Rob, how's it going? Thank you, Jets. I appreciate you. I gotta add you to my uh, to my wall of moderators that I've drawn. So far, I've drawn DT twice. I've drawn Abs once. I think I've drawn everybody else as well in the moderation squad. Uh, tens I've drawn. I've drawn ID. I think that's it. I've drawn Vital. So every every mod in this channel has been drawn except here. 
but I do appreciate that. Yeah, her work is absolutely incredible. Jen is excellent. So let's just do some drawing real quick, right? So we're going to be bringing this into a sketch phase. So in the sketch phase, what's important is you push a few ideas. You want to push gesture, you want to push information. Really important. So while the silhouettes are very easy to do and they're very easy to kind of iterate over, and that's the point of them, we want to be able to try to flesh out this idea, kind of give you indications of you know the specifics of how the musculature actually occurs, where the skin sags, where you have folds, where you have areas of slight detail, and then we bring that back into the next stage, which is going to be our orthographics. If you guys don't know what an orthographic is, I can show you some of those as well. Here's an example of this robot flamethrower dude. This is an orthographic that I did a few days ago. So basically the idea is if you're going to design for a game or a movie or any sort of like major production or media production, they're going to be some sort of 3D modelers there that want you to show, they want exactly to know what something looks like from all angles. So you say, all right, this is the front of my character, this is the side, this is the back. And based on this, they should be able to construct a 3D model, right? Of course, you provide them with three forks as well after that, but we're not going to be doing three forks today. I don't think we're going to be doing orthographics today, but we'll do a few, few kind of cool sketches and that'll be fun. Trickster Coyote is a classmate that taught me all the simple things about art, like values, shapes, and some color theory. I met him two years ago, and after that, you taught me the, <laughs> I don't say I taught you the rest, I told you to go read. I'm simply um, a relay for information. Like I said, whenever I give explanations on anything, I always point out to where the information comes from. And I encourage you to do your own research. Because like I said, even though I might distill a lot of information, in that distillation process, I might be leaving out something vital, because everybody has their own way of approaching something, so... Highly recommend looking at the information for yourself. Okay, so let's bring this into a sketch. The first thing we do is we cut the opacity. I want to start building... I don't mind the gesture on this too much. I think the gesture is fine. And the reason the gesture is fine is because we base this off of a reference. We bash this in from this doggo over here. This doggo is going to provide us some primary reference. So let me just rearrange my board here so that I have some things that are relevant to my particular drawing. I want to get these basking shop references and put those in an appropriate region. So let's mirror this for convenience. I don't need any of these right now. We'll put this one in here for mood. And I want to have some indication of the tail. I'm going to bring back the frill most likely. So I have four references and that's all I need to bring the sketch into life. I have a pose, I have some detail information and I have some other surface texture stuff. I noticed that Noah was saying a lot of things you say and I was like, ah, oh, that's where he learned this. Yeah, there you go. That's the idea. Okay, so whenever I do my sketches, the first thing that I will do is I'll push that gesture a little bit and see if I want to even. But this one, like I said, it just doesn't need to be pushed all that much, but I'll start with some pretty vague lines right there. Just an idea of where things could go, because I want something to structure this on. And at this point, I can start to make mild changes to my idea. So I want to bring this little ridge over there, so I'll start to kind of indicate that ridge right now, where that ridge needs to go. And maybe even here, for example, I can add a little bit of that ridge there. But I need to figure out the mechanics, of course, because it needs to curl that way. If it curls that way, maybe the bridge will curl that way as well. Something like that, perhaps. What program do you draw and what tablet, please? I'm curious. So the program is Krita, K-R-I-T-A. I'll write it down for you. And my tablet, you should be able to get that from exclamation mark tablet. But if you cannot, it's a Huion Canvas Pro 20. So a 20 inch Canvas Pro. That's my hardware and software. And I use a really shitty tablet. Dude, thanks for the sub, Karov. Very kind of you. Okay, so let's bring this back into our basking shark. Thanks for the support, dude. I really appreciate that. So right now, I'm, I'm not going to be picky because there's going to be several sketch layers. So at this stage, I really want to get the idea out there in a way that makes some, some amount of sense. So if there's going to be imperfection in the sketch, I actively encourage it. I don't really mind if there's going to be imperfection in the sketch because there's going to be so many iterations here. At this stage, I just want to get some information out there, some ideas about musculature. I want to get these informations at, at the beginning. So one of the like the secret hidden tips, I guess, that's been taught to me by my mentor, his name is Charlie, um, is the fact that you can iterate over your own work again and again and again. So I'm not drawing this with the intention of saying this is going to be my final sketch. I'm putting information and landmark at this particular stage so that later on I can choose to pull from this and try to bring some things into the finished drawing. But right now, it doesn't benefit me from being strict. What It doesn't benefit me in the design to say, okay, well, I'm going to make my leg like this. It's going to have a notch here. It's going to have a tendon here. It's going to have you know, a claw right there. 
it doesn't benefit me all that much doing that right now. I can always go and do that in the future. But right now, what happens if I say that I want this leg to maybe not look exactly like this? Maybe I want the leg to be bottom weighted, right? Maybe I want to have a large foot over here. At this stage, I can make that change. And then later on, I can go and I can commit to it. And I can add detailed information. That's kind of how I do it. Hopefully that makes some sense. What did you drop in the chat? What is that? Oh, is that your Instagram? Cool. It is good. I think it's uh, it would be this one most likely. There you go. You got it. So that tablet was uh, stream funded. You guys have been very kind to me. So I can figure out some specifics right now about the way the mouth happens, for example. So just something that are going to be objectively in the drawing. I like these folds on the gill. I think that's a really cool idea. And I'm giving him these beautiful little frills right there. I think that's awesome. All right, so I'm going to bring some of the musculature of the dog here. So definitely I want I want there to be that beautiful arching spine right there. I think that looks awesome. And we'll bring in that beautiful thorax in here as well. Beautiful ribs. So some argument can be made. Some ideas could be said about the fact that, well, are you really designing this based on a rigid skeleton? And is there a benefit in doing so? Well, there is a benefit. Right, there's always a benefit. For example, I would have liked to maybe have designed the skull on this one a little bit better because if I designed the skull, it would be easier to bring this into 3D. Because, for example, if I was going to draw a lion or a horse, for example, like I know what a, like a horse skull looks like um, from the side, like we know, like we're familiar with this shape already, so we know how it looks. This kind of idea is like it's not it's known to us, so we can draw the horse basically in any way. Same thing with the lion, right? So we know the lion skull. This kind of idea goes like that, goes like that. In here, in here, goes around centrally placed socket. This kind of idea, right? So this is all known to us. But I don't know the skull for this shark. So it's difficult for me to rotate. But the thing is, I don't have to rotate for this stream right now. Because we're not gonna get to three we're not gonna get to all the graphics for this uh, for this stream. We're just gonna be doing sketches, so it's fine. Are you happy with your tablet? I am looking for a tablet, should I decide to upgrade? If you're unhappy with it, definitely upgrade. But I'm, I'm very happy with my tablet. I'm really, really overjoyed to have it. Let's put that eye in here. I'm, I think the eye is going to go right over there. I like the placement of the eye. It's going on this kind of rigid mouse. It's kind of helps me because I want to think a little bit about volume here. So it goes, it goes depressed right over there. This kind of idea. It's going to be a fairly important thing to, to put in. I like the language over here. So when you're drawing anything, it's good to kind of think about what the overall shape language is going to be for your drawing. I'm going to make this a drawing about kind of triangles with a little bit of circulature, or a little bit of circles circles in it. So I have these arching curves like this, and I have these triangles to kind of finish out points. So I'll be thinking a little bit about that while I design. I want to show a little bit of the ribs over here, maybe. So I don't know if that's going to make it into the final design. I have no idea, but it's going to be. It's going to be um, an idea that I like, put forward for this, for this painting. So I'll design some of the, um, the musculature for the legs, for instance. So it'll bring my dog's barking because it's raining and he gets scared. Feels a bad man. Or maybe my dad got back, I don't know. Poor little dude. Like I said, he was bleeding a lot today because he nicked his elbow. Poor little fella. Like I said, be very be nice and loose over here. I don't really care about too much. Just the impression of that, uh, of that leg is sufficient for me. How do you insert pictures in Krita, the ones that are on your side of your drawing that you're busy with? Uh, just click and drag. So click um, any picture in your desktop in a folder, click it and drag it into your Krita window, release it, and it should prompt you with a, with a pop-up saying, do you want to import this as a new layer, as a new document, as a new reference? So you use that, that tool, you use reference. So import it as a reference. And once you do that, you should be able to manipulate it using this tool over here. The referencing tool right there so once you click that you can move it around but otherwise you can't paint over it you can't do anything with it so that's that's how you move it around this thumbtack tool right there see reference images tool that's what you do <laughs> you better be happy with it true Rianne how's it going good to see you so again let's uh push this little Gesture on the uh, on the leg right there. Bring it back down again. Be nice and non-specific with it. So now we are at an impasse, right? Because we have to fit, we have to fit this leg. But the, right now we have this idea of a gill on there, right? So it's a bit of a contradiction. So I need to have enough musculature to support the leg, 
because the leg can't just be drawn outside the torso. We have so many elements to of the leg. We have a, a scapula right there, we have a shoulder right there, we have an elbow right there. And it has muscles around it. There's a delta, there's a rhomboid, there's a infraspinar, there's a teres major. There's so many muscles around here that need to be supported. So I have to make a decision here. Either I move this head in front and break the silhouette, one option, or I paint this over and I lose out on the gills idea. Right? So it's got to be one or two. So we'll try both ideas out. Like we're not, we're not stuck here. We'll try both ideas out. But I don't know which one's going to make it into the drawing. But again, this is why I don't... I don't like jump into just specific details right now. We keep things ambiguous and we work on top of that. So this is one idea. This is the idea that says, okay, I'm going to have my musculature in front and that's going to be the drawing right there. This kind of idea, right? And we have another option over here because the legs have to stay here to kind of support the frame. But we have another option, which is we just elongate the head, right? So I'll elongate the head really quickly. So we bring this head forward like that. And I still have room now. I have some amount of room in the drawing to add in those beautiful little holes like that. So which do you guys prefer, I wonder? Me just for a bit? Well, it's good to have you just for a bit. So do we do it this way or do we do, do we do it this way? Kind of like the second one, right? That was cool. That looks interesting. I'm a fan of that. In the meantime, I'm gonna just jump in and put some of my lizard in here. I'll put some of the lizards. Think about the spines a bit more. Think about the way that spine's gonna actually occur with a little bit of that sketch right there. This is gonna give myself a bit of a notion. I like that curve on the behind, so it curves into, goes straight, and then and it goes back into the rest of the drawing, the rest of the gesture. I like that a lot. Shape. And of course, it's not strictly a curve. So it goes like that. Half in between, have less skills, make the next shorter. You want to make the next shorter? Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm okay with that. Not bad, you mean? It works, thanks a lot. Always saw people doing that, but never knew how. No problem. And if you have any issues with Krita, by the way, the subreddit of Krita is quite good. It's quite uh, it's quite solid. It's a really good server. If you have any issues with Krita, great place to go check. Okay, so my sketch is kind of being developed right now, and I'm I'm getting happier and happier with it. But let's add some more specifics here. So I want to see where that uh, that mouth kind of curves around, and maybe we throw in some specifics in just a second. So kind of just figuring out the end of the musculature, figuring out where his quads and hamstrings are. Just a couple little notes right over there. I think we should be okay to proceed and add a bit more information on this dude. So is he grounded is a big question to ask because you need to be grounding your sketches. This is what I've been always, always told to do. I never do it, but I've been told to do it so many times. So let's make sure that it's roughly on the same ground plane. That's kind of important later on uh, to avoid like perspective issues and whatever. Uh, but this is the idea so far. And now I can choose to add certain things. So I have an issue with this sketch, with this drawing, which is I have a design element right there, which is the frill, but it's not like fully integrated with the rest of the drawing as much as I'd like. So at this stage, I want to add that a few more areas. I want to add it in a few more places. So let's throw it over here, maybe. Let's throw it near the hands. And Javier has a gun. Let's throw it right there. Like it's, it's webbing from the leg. And we'll throw it right there as well. Like it webs from the leg. Now it's a bit more integrated. So your Anthony Jones rule of three right there. Speaking of Anthony Jones. Hi Engineer, good to see you. And I want to throw in a little bit of that, those spots right there. I think those spots are kind of cool. So let's throw in some of those spots. A right, surface texture. So the surface texture will be spots and maybe a bit of stripes. Okay, so now we're, we're right over here. And now you can continue. So what we do is we just build upon this. So I just reduce the opacity on this layer. I'll group all the layers together. I'll make sure I save my file. And we'll iterate right on top of this, right? So now I get even more specific. But we have been designing a, a big mouthed creature around here. You want to see the silhouettes? Those are the silhouettes that we arrived at. Just really quick ones. I'm doing this one right now. 
Some of them have been uh, mixed and matched quite uh, quite quickly because people in chat said I like number one, but I like number three's face. So some of them are more uh, are more copy pasted than others. But uh, yeah, these are really fun to do. So I did about ten and a half an hour, and then I'm doing that sketch. You like the sixth one? Sixth one. This one? I can like that one as well. But it didn't get chosen. Uh, this is our final list. These three. All right, a bit more specific now. So think about the musculature a bit more, think about the way that things are going to go inward and outward. We can think a little bit about the tendons, the knees, going into this beautiful, beautiful leg right there. I want to see how it turns out. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I cannot wait for myself. Let's uh, have a shorthand for the legs. Even though I've been really told that um, for at least for people, it's gonna matter how well you can do your hands in shorthand. I'm gonna do this design roughly in like ones, twos, and threes, so I'll get the outside silhouette sort of sorted at the very beginning. So just a little bit of a rumble right there. Doesn't have to be a straight line. A little bit of a rumble, though possible. Let's get this coming from out there, maybe. Any specifics I've got to worry about with the tail? Not really, so we can just put this little tail nice and gesturally, like that, perfectly okay, and bring it back in here. The fun thing is we get to put value on this guy now, it'll be really fun. I'm going to throw a little bit of a knob right there for the tailbone. The ref dog looks a bit starved. Uh, he's not starved, I don't think, he's just a whippet. The whippets look like that. I don't think he's starved. Easy to think so, though. But they're usually very, very gauntly built, and they carry very, uh, very low amounts of body fat. Yeah. Bring that over there, and we have the gestural line going that way. Nice. Get that back leg in there. Beautiful chunky back leg. But how's it going, Ona? Are you back home still? Are you heading back home to um, your usual place of residence? Are you going to be streaming soon? What's the situation? Give us the, give us the whole, whole nine yards. I love those bones right down the back, those little ridges. That's kind of cool. So I'm just adding a little bit more specifics here on top of my original. And I get to resolve some ideas that I had in the past. Resolving ideas of saying, okay, well, exactly how does this actually look? How far does it stretch? How does it interact with the skin? These kinds of questions. Just fun things to answer in general. So a lot of my designs I kind of like from the original, so I'm going to keep it. I might bring it a bit further in. And I might separate it out like that. I think that would look, look kind of cool. Just throw some big medium small in there, right? I could even make this look like that, maybe. But uh, that seems like it's a little too much. Is it too much, though? I kind of like that a lot, actually. I'm going to be here till the 27th. Going to stream some sometime next week, too. Awesome. And I'll wait, as always. Go follow Angevir. Awesome streamer, she does this kind of thing all the time. He's an expert though on this. Everything I know I learned from that stream. Okay, more specifics towards the shark now. So I like the, the contour of his mouth well enough, that's okay. Uh, I want just to have a little bit more information about the way the mouth kind of translates into the big old baskingness, right? And also I want to figure out if I want to put teeth in here, like I don't, I don't know just yet. Do I want to put teeth in this drawing? Do I want to have, have a crazy amount of teeth uh, inside the shark's mouth? 
I'm not entirely certain. Also, T lines. T lines till infinity, please. I don't know. Let's try some teeth on him. Let's see what it looks like. I like the eyes a lot and the shark. I like how it's placed. <laughs> he looks like he's seen some shit. I always want to put octopus eyes on things, you know? Put these kind of eyes. But it doesn't fit the design. Those kind of eyes over there. I mean, it kind of does. It's kind of cute. Just give him big old shark eyes. I always really want to, like, put these kind of drawings. I really want to go in there and do this, you know? Like, put that, put that eyelid in there. And then, like, give him a... Like a bit of a, of a ridge in the eye, this kind of detail. But it doesn't really fit. It doesn't fit the smooth structure. I can still do it, right? There's nothing that stops me. But that seem, it seems like a little bit too much at this stage. I don't want to do it right now. Okay, so figure out a bit more detail. So I have the outside contour. Do a bit more on the outside, then we go in with some, um, with some twos and we design a little bit more. We got the outside over here, all sorted. I think I like the way this is. Just throw in some additional shapes just to prevent it from looking a bit too boring. And of course, need to follow that overall gesture as well. Find the musculature. That actually breaks the silhouette right there, so I'm gonna just throw a line in there so I know. It's not gonna be in a 3D, but. So we're not going to draw this in an orthographic, but it just it might be a cool thing to put in. I like that little shape that goes down here, almost like a horse. That's a cool little shape to put in. Same thing on the other side. Some more specifics. Uh, maybe indicate a little bit of the contour, so now we can go back into our There are twos right there, so we can put our twos in here now. So the twos will denote a bit of the contouring, and we'll put detail with ones. So I can get rid of some of the underlying layers right now. I'll keep, I'll keep this one. Just some information about the contour, the way things are actually formed, these kind of things. I have to go. I'll buy Indian Abroad and Streamers. See ya, man. Thanks for stopping by. And thank you for the sub. Very, very, very much appreciated. The front side, get that ginormous shoulder in there. There's so many beautiful like interlocking muscles over there, but I don't think I'm going to be drawing any of them. But just like a simplification on the planes would be fine. Over there is fine. Something in the middle, just to indicate the way that... I think that's the adductor right there. Little bits of information about the ribs. I was watching a video, went to the right. What do you have for us, Lazar? Yeah, this is where you said it to me yesterday. Looks cool. Nice. So we have um, a sketch right now. We have two layers of sketch. Now is the fun part. We get to throw in some value. Because that's, that's really what the sketch is for. We get to throw in some beautiful value. Drill tip, James. Keep thinking about how this creature would live in the world and. Uh, Oh, live in the world you imagine it. How does it feed? Is it aquatic or land-based? It would be logical to see it in a specific habitat that will help to push the design even further. Makes sense, yeah. I'm thinking about this as like an amphibious creature. That lives in the swamp. Let's just uh, quickly get a bit of this. So we will just do a bit of masking really quickly. So obviously, in terms of graphic read, the frills go into light, skin goes into dark. Is Shrek an amphibious creature? Somebody banned that guy. Yeah, thinking about the whole, like, who, who talks about that? Is it John Park? Talks about the form follows function idea. I agree with that. Okay, master that. 
Let's grab... Grab that, maybe. That's fine. Okay. So let's get something for the skin really quickly. Maybe that's a bit too dark to begin with. Just something like that to start off with. Okay. And we'll have something lighter on the outside. For the frills. Frills are going to go into light. I don't necessarily have to do it so strictly, by the way. It oftentimes even helps at this stage, at least like in terms of like how quickly I, I get to a kind of finished render. I like to just throw in brush textures from this stage onward. I think it just helps me get to that finish a bit a bit quicker than doing things super strictly. So if I have any textual ideas, now is basically the time that I'm going to start putting those in. Let's throw in the frills over here, over there a little bit. The fact that it's going to read graphically against my darks right over there. Very nice. Of course, I'm going to put my extreme darks. What on earth happened to my ones in the front? Put those back into the picture. My threes, rather. Just disappeared. Oh, PC, how's it going, Mikey? I'm designing a creature right now. I hope you like it. Just for you. Hey, this is gonna be a, a weird big mouth basking shark amphibious thing. Put that in there, just like that. And throw you in here, just like that. To be fair, I, I don't like that brushwork. It's actually looks a little bit shitty to me right now. Catching my ex-girlfriend well, man. What that mouth do though? Put that back down. Nice. And of course, we're going to reserve that super dark value for the inside of the mouth. I like the idea of having the fins be see-through. Yeah, but that, that's not going to be really conveyed uh, in this reference, right? Can I can I do see-through? Oh, I guess I can do it in a few areas like that. Possible. Sometimes James comes up with the funniest jokes and it goes over people's heads. I don't think so. I think it's not funny. Jen, how's it going? Did you get something to eat? We're designing creature boy number one. So the idea is just to have a graphical breakup of what you're looking at. So we, we broke it up graphically to a certain extent. Uh, I can even choose to start to bring things into foreground background by pushing things with value, also possible. I just saw it in the back legs. You just saw it. But what? I did, I got a burrito with some extra hot, hot sauce on it. Hell yeah. You like hot ones? Um, Jen, do you watch hot, hot, the uh, show with Sean Evans? The thing with putting this like the darker value in the background, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I actually like putting lighter in the background, but I'll just I'll just bite the bullet and do it this time. Doesn't really matter. This makes me think of a basking shark. Yeah, there you go. The basking shark's up there. Yeah. That was one of the uh, the things that we used because I wanted to create like a big mouthed creature. That was my my goal for the stream. And we ended up with uh, with this little person over here, which is a. Uh, just the, just the happiest little boy right here. He's just so happy to be around. Okay, so let's throw in another layer. We'll go in with a little bit of detail here. So now I treat it almost like a Noah Bradley drawing of, um, of backgrounds. I want to keep my graphical read nice and strong. So this value is going to be not as crazy. So I'm not going to just take this value and put it in here. I'm going to keep it reading dark. Now the thing about graphic read is that it doesn't have to be strictly in terms of value. Your graphical read could be even in terms of the amount of detail, for instance, textual differences, um, you know, the amount of elements in that particular area. It does not have to uh, necessarily be about value, but I will choose to treat it as a value problem right now. So we'll just do it based on that. 
I was just painting my cat earlier. It was a creative casserole. Not, not easy to paint. I think painting a cat is definitely worth uh, with some commendations in and of itself. You want to share? Can I see? Keep it right over there, maybe. I'll do some final painting over at a later stage. Same thing over here. I'm going to throw a little bit of um, variation right there. Not too much. We don't want a billion different values, but just a couple of values on top of here is sufficient, right? Just going to give you information about what you're seeing. The way it reacts to light, all the different stuff. Thankfully, we have all these references that allow us to see what we're looking at. So at this stage, we're going to build up that contour. And at the end, we put some surface detail on that. There's a lot that we can accomplish just by simple value right now. Try and accomplish it. The contours of the bouncing shock's mouth. They go like this. That's going to be in chair right over there. And his schnoot. The beautiful schnoot. Does he have uh, nostrils? Do you have nostrils? You gotta have nostrils, right? You're an animal. I didn't even take a picture of that. I'd love to see it though, if you, uh, if you don't mind. I don't want to distract you from your, uh, from your burrito. Maybe afterwards. That'd be awesome. Oh, thanks so much for that raid. Very kind of you. He has, has gills? Well, mm, mm. True. True. I need to go see it? Have a good stream, Ryan. I'm assuming that's what you're gonna go do. He does have gills, my boy Abs, you're right. Let's add that contour right there. We'll, we'll throw in some darkness back there. I'm gonna indicate that. You happy now? Alright. Anything back here? Just a little bit of a hint as to the structure of the leg. Single value. That's all we need. We need to give him nostrils though. I do need to give him nostrils though. That is correct. Also, Jen, you were hungry, huh? I would too. You guys stream for so long. I don't stream for nearly as long as any of you guys. It makes me feel kind of bad about myself. Where's my, my goddamn stamina when it comes to streaming? But it definitely shows it's a very admirable trait. The uh, darkness in the back right there. I don't want to be tossing too many values on here. Because again, I'm not going to render this out. Just sketch it out. You should be. Jesus. Alright, let's toss that nostril in here. So I stop getting bullied. Does it even make any sense though, that nostril? What does a shark's nostril even look like? I don't see any nostril in there. Just abs, do you? I'm just going to put this in here. You know sharks have a specialized organ in their nose. It's called the ampullae of Lorenzini. And it's uh, used to detect electrical impulses. So they detect fish that way. Let's throw in some darkness. Just a WIP so far. They do? Well, there you go. I'll just finish this early on the stream. Let me see, Jen. Oh, that's coming out so cute so far. This is what Jen posted. Beautiful. So good. Love your music. So peaceful. Perfect for drawing. I am a big fan of my, uh, my generic playlist. And also the fact that it doesn't um, get copy striked or copyrighted or whatever you call it. It doesn't infringe, so I can um, upload vlogs to YouTube and stuff like that. I don't get why it does this on my computer. I can't like stuff on my goddamn computer anymore. Good job. Really, really cool. Has watercolor as well. Very, very accurate stuff. Thanks so much for sharing, that's awesome. I saw that piece, I think, uh, midway through your stream. It's very good. Okay, let's toss a little bit of light in here. Remember the region still. Read the message and maybe it'll tell you why. 
Read the message. What message? What are you talking about, Ash? The one that pops up? Wait, what are we talking about? Can you try and like stuff? Oh, the action is blocked, that message? That certainly is an idea, reading. Who'd have thought? A little bit of contouring on here. The ribs protrude out, uh, outside, so it protrudes that way, so therefore it catches a bit of that. The gills don't do that as much, so the gills don't catch that much light. Just a couple of couple of passes with some values, still maintaining my graphic read. And of course, if I need these values to stick out a bit more, I can always at any time just go into my um, into my level shifter, uh, into my uh, filters, and I can just filter this out. I can filter it out and make it look a little bit more um, strict in terms of value. I was thinking about trying a left-handed challenge. You should. I, I had a lot of fun with mine actually. I thought it was going to be horrible, but uh, not so much actually. It was uh, it was quite manageable. I even had fun in a few of the occasions. But what made it a lot, a lot of fun for me personally is the fact that when people donated, I could use my right hand. So um, I could still make work that looked kind of good, even if I was failing hard with the left hand stuff. I had a, a backup strategy. Which is kind of neat. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun. I definitely had a great time. Let's amp up the light towards the end of that frill. Is it a good idea or a bad idea? I'm gonna say bad idea, I don't like that. I would like to have it a, a slightly gradient though. I think a slight gradient would be nice. Let's toss one on there and see what happens. There's only so much I can think of, so beyond that I gotta just put it on the canvas and see if it works. That looks kinda cool, I'm not gonna lie. Kinda cool. I'm alright with that. And I can even get Abs' uh, transparency from here. Just tossing a little bit of that over there, and a little bit of this over here. Okay, I gotta go exercise for a bit, my legs are kind of cramped up from sitting. Yeah, I feel you. When I'm doing my commission work or my uh, portfolio work stuff, I just, uh, I superset it with a bunch of pull-ups. So I work for like 10 minutes to do a set of pull-ups and then work for 10 minutes. But thanks so much for the raid, Jen. Very, very kind of you. Thanks for coming back to say hi. Always appreciate seeing you. Yeah, have a good one. There we go. It's nice. And I want to just put a layer of finish on this. I'll see you soon. Love your streams. Thank you so much. And I will see you as well. Have a good workout. I'm gonna throw a little bit of slick on this. A little bit of specular reflection because I wanna make this look a little bit like it's like sort of slimy, a slimy surface texture. So wherever that's wherever is appropriate, I'm gonna throw a little bit of slick on it. And here just a little bit. Dog yelling in the background. He's such an idiot. He's like he's he's gone almost blind in his old age, and sometimes he just forgets where he is and he starts barking because he panics. But he usually finds his way out. What does that not do? You like to know? Get a bit of that, uh, a bit of that highlight in some of these areas. An easy way of doing this is actually um, this way, you know? I'm doing it very specifically, but an easier way would be to do it this way, which is to just grab 
do it like a marker almost if you want something to look reflective that way and then you just paint bands like that and you keep it as your shorthand throughout the piece that's a much easier way of doing it i don't really mind that actually the way that it looks it's actually fine not infringe on it slightly but that always it looks cleaner when it's done that way uh, i'm actually a fan of that A little bit of that over there. I'll toss a little bit of this darkness near the spines. I got into digital I'm using Clip Studio. By the way, the name was, was Chris Card. How's it going, Chris? Good to see you. Yeah, I know you changed your name. I saw it on, the, on Instagram. But it's good to see you. How's, how's it been going? How have your streams been going? Shout out to Chris. We appreciate him over here. Good dude. Go check out his work. Got an awesome Instagram. How's it going, my friend? Also, a couple of these little darkness back here. Even though it is transparent, I'm going to see a little bit of that in there. And I want to add my spots. I'm going to add my speckle, speckle back in here. A little textures. Add that speckle back in here. I'm really good, thank you. I've been trying to get used to using ink on digital. Ink on digital is the. Uh, yeah, it definitely is possible. What kind of work you've been doing? Because I, I follow your feed, but I, I'm not sure like which ones are. The digital one because it works so cleanly traditional so it's sometimes hard for me to see but you can just post something in the chat i'd love to see it throw some little speckles near the area of interest right there draw the attention to the eye there they are back to no problem iris i want to get some white in the mouth just like in the um in the shock reference right there <laughs> I will see you in a bit. Did I get that beautiful darkness? Right. I'll seal the deal. And the head right there. Let's ensure that we have a good read. On the bottom of the jaw. Let's do a little bit of the eye really quickly. Get that eye reading nice and dark. Get a little highlight, maybe, at the top. Just to make it fit better with the rest of the environment. Because there's two slides here. Let me see. I'm back. Welcome back, Mikey. Should I give this guy Ugu eyes, Mikey? What do you think? Should he have super cute eyes? <laughs> sure, not sound too convinced. I don't know, but <laughs> okay. I'll uh, I'll elect to put in a core shadow because I kind of want a core shadow. There's an oh, also, let me look at Chris's link real quick. Oh, sweet! I like that. Yeah, I love using traditional methods in digital, Chris, and they definitely work. But it takes a little, a little bit of time to find a workflow. Like I do oil painting, like I would in traditional, uh, in traditional work. So you can follow a workflow that makes sense. This night is lit. Thank you. That's one of my uh, my studies. But you can definitely emulate traditional stuff, and maybe even like um, search on YouTube if people do like traditional methods of inking. But I can't, I can't say that it's like too different, right? The only thing that's going to be a bit different is the way that you adjust like the pen angle to get different kind of lines. But I think you can just adjust brushes, so you'll find your way through uh, quite well.
Let's just throw in a core shadow really quickly. So basically I want to just give this a bit more of a three-dimensional feel. So we can do that by just emphasizing the core a little bit more. Rhyme, by the way. Gotta emphasize the core a little bit more. Just wait and see what I have in store. But I'm not a rapper. Okay, so this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna emphasize this like like insanely, and we'll just tone it back down later on. Got an insane amount of core shadow in here. Holy shit, who is this guy? Where is he from? But I will tone it down. Just for my own sake of uh, keeping it nice and visually clear. I'll amp it up first, we'll amp it up, and then we'll push it back down. That much first, and then we just reduce that effect of that. Bring it back down. See that? Still has a tangible effect on the piece. It has an effect of nicely rounding things out for us. Alex, how's it going, dude? And you can even throw in a little bit of that uh, reflected light in there. The fundamental components of lighting, how about that? Show our education there a little bit. I used to use Krita, but then it was it started to die every time I hit that that use. It, it can happen. Krita has a lot of variants um, on different machines, and it can totally happen that way. Uh, if you want like, to give it another try, you can submit something to the Krita Reddit, and there are usually devs on the Reddit that will help you out, if you want. But if you're having success with CSP, then just stick with CSP, there's no reason to switch. CSP is a good program. I've tried CSP personally, I don't like it. Uh, but again, like, like I said, to each his own, if you find something that works, just... The first sketch, I think. Look how cool it is. Love it. Lacking some specifics with the legs, my goodness. Can your legs be a little bit more specific, maybe? Hey James, quick question. Yeah, go ahead. And a bit more specific to the leg right there. Just give him like uh, kind of like doll, dog claws, dog claws rather. And we can easily just round out everything using a little bit of line. It's still a sketch, we're okay with it. And make sure we don't go crazy with the darkness of the views. Ready? I like it. Let's fix a few of these issues that have kind of nagging in here, here and there. Oh Jesus Christ, did you copy paste that? I'll look at it in just a second, one moment. <laughs> hey James, you have any answer question? BAM! Answer that motherfucker. Alright, one, one moment. Gonna put some line around this one. I have a problem with writing too much. It's okay, I've dealt with jets enough in my DMs. I have PS, I'm gonna do CS, and it's good. CS, PS is very good. Uh, I like the documentation of Photoshop. But not, not necessarily, again, like people use it for a lot of success, but you don't need to use it. Again, whatever, whatever makes you feel comfortable uh, in your process, that's the one that you use. Rinse G, how's it going, man? Are you doing a commission for a uh, cult? Uh, no, I'm not. This is just uh, personal work, I guess. Because I need more um, 
I just need more experience with design, so designing a creature with a big mouth. That's basically what this uh, what this is. This is my first design, and we are done. Easy peasy. Cool. So creature number one, and we can save that. I'll put you, cutie pie. We'll put you over here, on the top. What a good boy he is. There we go. So that's the first one done with. We have two more. Then I can address your question really quickly. Yeah, but this is just um, doing a sketch phase. So here's an example of that. So we're taking silhouettes and turning them into sketches. I did the silhouettes at the beginning of the stream, if you want to see how those are done. But if you want to see the silhouettes on these ones, uh, here they are. So I took this silhouette over here and we turned it into this right over there. Kind of cool, right? So this guy came from that. So like I said, just refinement. Thanks, I appreciate that. The band is called Ghost. That's oh, a big bill. Thanks for the follow, by the way. I do appreciate that. Okay, so let's answer Zara's question and then do the next silhouette. Uh, I'm doing a commission here and they want the hands like this. Only problem is I don't actually know what's going on with the hands as it's just one weird shape. If you were to approach this, would you just stick to the reference or would you define the hands a bit more? It looks weird on my canvas. <laughs> what in the world is that? <laughs> I know, right? I, I can tell you what's happening there. That's a big suck monka S. Yeah, that's basically the idea on this one, Rinsji. I, I saw this picture of a dog, and I was like, I want to make a creature with a giant fucking mouth. So that's the, uh, this, this picture spawned this stream. Also, you know what we should do? Let's do this really quickly. Let's uh, grab a person. Where's my um, vehicle silhouettes? Let's just grab this really quickly. Here's some vehicles that I designed a while ago. Um, I'm gonna grab. I wanna grab this dude over here. Just put him here. Just for scale. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, good sir. You are not behaving well, so I need to brute force you like this. There we go. Fixed. What the fuck happened to his legs? That's some artifacting, my dude. That's some severe artifacting. I could have just drawn a person and made it quicker. Oh, Krita. Oh, Krita, you're so... So so much of a joy sometimes to work with. Give me his little booties. Look at the person. Now I know how big my sucky dude is. Okay. Av uh, says you can find references for hands in similar posture with actual anatomy that makes sense. I'm sure the anatomy makes sense in this one as well. Let's look at it again. So this is probably the way that this is right now. Let's outline it in red. 
So let's build this structure, right? We'll build it. So we know that our this over here. I'm just drawing that over there is probably going to be the carpus or carpal. That's right over there. And you have your metacarpals over here, most likely. So I think this is what we're seeing right here. So carpal right there, metacarpal right there. The thumb probably coming out like that, and the first finger going outward in perspective, like that. It's probably weirdly skewed because of his um. gloves but that's probably what we're looking at this kind of idea but exaggerate that it looks like this this kind of idea same thing over here as well this is his thumb this is his finger Thing over here that's his pinky on the other side and he probably has two fingers right over there this is metacarpal right there this is meta it's phalange right there and his carpal is right over here it goes into his wrist that's probably how it is think yeah probably man probably yeah I would say so there's probably a lot of overlap right there but that's what you're looking at if you want to broken down but they're much like much more sensible ways like I like this idea I like the idea of the hand going up uh, and the carpal kind of bending and creating the metacarpal like that that's a cool idea like it's a very really super gestural pose. I think that's cool. And I even, I even like the shape of that thumb. I think that thumb looks good. But for everything else, I would like, maybe make it a bit more readable. That could work like that, like a, like a, like a scrunched up claw, like that. Just have like a couple of fingers going over there. Don't twist it in the, in the middle of the air. And something like that is sufficient for the, for the effect, right? That kind of idea. Maybe you want it to be a bit more like wider reaching, have it like sprawled out, out, out that, that way, which means we can do something like this even. You bring it up. This kind of idea. Also kind of works. So bring it even further in perspective and twist the arm, or twist the uh, hand a little bit more. That works as well. Okay, so you're defining things by what it is, even if it looks very ambiguous. But what do you mean? If it's a hand, then yeah, because it's hard to bullshit a hand because the demand on specificity is higher. It's like, would I draw a face how it is, or would I construct? I would do a bit of both. Same thing for a hand, so that's, that's why I'm constructing it, so I can see what's actually there. Because it's very ambiguous, right? It's, it's a solid shape right there. It's a solid shape with, a, with a very little like, actual context on what I'm seeing. So, I'm not going to draw this. Because this makes no sense to me. I'm not going to draw this. Because the lack of structural information is going to be so evident that it'll look garbage. Because you need structure in drawing, right? You always need structure. So unless you're unless you're tracing it, I would never just like draw it as it is. I would always construct it. Because the construction would look more believable. The end of the day, the idea that I'm trying to push here is the idea that um, things can look fine in a photograph because you have the aura of uh, believability in a photograph you're like okay that's a photograph so i believe it but a lot of the times especially because of the lack of depth perception because it's not a real life reference um like a perspective that's sort of the fact that you don't have the benefit of the doubt anymore about whether it's real or possible when you transfer certain things to a painting there's no guarantee that it looks believable there can be a lot of really unbelievable poses and I do a lot of gesture practice, and I can tell you for a fact that a lot of a lot of poses look terrible uh, when drawn out. Even if you trace them out, they would look terrible. So you want to push the believability aspect of it. So whatever you need to do to accomplish that is... So this is like a much more believable one for me. 
So, because right now the the way that it's oriented is that this entire hand is turning is turning that way. So it's twisting, so you can see the pinky. So I'm not turning it nearly as much. It just kind of turns slightly that way, but it's not turning nearly as much. This kind of idea. Well, it's gonna look weird, but it's believable because it's a photo and it's real. Exactly. A professional whose name is Gabriel Schmitz paints a lot of dancers, but he changes it because dress look weird, and it wouldn't look good in the painting. Exactly. How's it going, Eric? Good to see you. We're designing big mouths to creatures right now. It's basically me. But this is my first one right there. Yeah, I hope that helped. I was thinking about that, but that's what it looks like in the, in the ref photo. Yeah, it's definitely a, a thing that has to be somewhat uh, considered. Is that just because something is in a reference does not necessarily mean it's believable. It's believable because it's a reference. Like a, a very similar thing, but a kind of a caveat to it. The caveat to it is the idea that sometimes, when even when somebody puts something in their painting, uh, it can look better than it would if you put it yourself, because you tend to view it in a different way. Like if somebody says, hey, this is my finished painting, and say, hey, this is my work in progress, it'll it'll be surprising the amount of change you will um, see in your analysis. Because, you know, some things that are stylistic become, you know, incomplete for you. Some things that look um, like a good abstraction will also look incomplete or, you know, not really thoroughly examined, these kind of ideas. So yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot to be thought about uh, in this subject. Okay, let's bring the second silhouette in here. That's our fir fun first one. Let's do this one now. I'm gonna grab this boy really quickly. Let's put him on the. Uh, Put him on the stream, so I have him there. Look, it's our son. So number two. This one's gonna be uh, interesting to do because uh, this one is the guy that looks like the pitbull. So let's arrange our references. I need my pitbull ref. Where did it go? Gone. I can get rid of my basking shark ref. So let me just put that to the side really quickly. I still need my lizard frill, and I'm gonna need this one as well. I don't need my goblin shark anymore. I don't need my horse. Oh, actually, I do need my horse. I don't need my dog. And I have this dog reference right here. Nice. Okay. Let's do our sketch. Reduce the opacity. Get like this ready. First to start iterating over. And we can just start nice and loose like the other one. Same old process, same old story. Start to put some initial markings to figure out where things are actually going to go. Because now we are out of the silhouetting phase and we need to lend a sense of believability to this animal. Okay, so first thing that I'm going to do is just sort of get the key element out of the way. So I want them to have this furry kind of texture over here. But I'm most likely going to make the fur into some sort of frill. I do want him to have a bit of a nose right over there. Going into his front teeth. I do want the lips to be somewhat bared backwards. So I'm going to be borrowing a little bit from my monkey reference. I'll bear the lips backward a little bit more. Just like that. And I have a little bit of that jaw peeking in through the bottom. Now there's going to be a tangenting issue down there that I have to account for. So either I do this or I do this, I will do the latter. Tangenting in the idea that if I do it like this, if I bring the jaw back parallel to this, 
there's an issue right there because when you have the lines that kind of touch just like that, it's called a tangent, and they can really kill the notion of spacing and depth in your inner drawing. So I'll bring it down here to avoid a tangent. Really important. Synergine calls them tangents. But uh, he's the one that taught me the idea. I do like the idea of the jaw coming down though, so let's actually put a little bit of that in there. Put the jaw like that maybe. What in the world is that big mouthed dog thing? It's a dog that's being hit by a leaf blower. So I want those clear, clear teeth right there. So let's put those gums in there. Not out of it. We'll put a clear gum structure. So there's going to be a rigid skeleton underneath this, right? So that's going to be part of a rigid skeleton. I like that tongue on the monkey rat. It's a cool, look, cool looking tongue. Put a little bit of that on there as well. And of course, let's put the star of the show right there. Those big canines in the front. Looks like it's been altered. No, it's a regular, regular old picture of a dog with a leaf blower blowing in its mouth. Just figuring out specifics on the head. It's gonna have a break right over there, most likely. That's funny. It is kind of, kind of unique, right? It's, it's an interesting looking thing. That's that's the image that started out all of this, by the way. That's the image that uh, made me want to do the creature design stream. Because I really wanted to like take that idea and iterate over it. Make a cool looking drawing. Okay. I'm gonna have to add a bunch of like bumps over here just to indicate that it's being furled back or furled back or whatever. It's kind of an idea. And now I'm gonna figure out how everything else attaches to the rest of the dog, the rest of the animal. There's so many specifics here that we haven't really talked about. But one thing that we can put over here, because it's an animal that's more closely related to canines, is we can put a little bit of a mouse up there immediately. I'm gonna cover the eyebrow, or cover the eye rather. And we can get to a much more typical shape over there on the eyes. Because we don't we want to have that large eyebrow mouse up there, up at the top. Because we're not drawing a shark anymore, we're drawing a, an animal. A wolf or a dog or something that's relatable to a certain extent. Let's put in some notion towards those teeth. I don't have to draw specifics right now, but just some notion is important. I don't know about that far side, by the way. That far side is somewhat bothersome. I don't know if it's going to make it into the final final drawing, but again, we can be non-specific right now. Because it doesn't match the perspective is the problem. It doesn't really match my perspective. Okay, let's do the rest of it. We have to figure out how this fits uh, in a way that makes some amount of sense because this large neck needs to be supported. We'll also kind of add in those striations really quickly. I just did them for the basking shark, so I kind of remember just about how I want to do this. Remember, design is still important, so the big, medium, small still happens here. So I have a big, I have a medium, I have a small in the most generic sense possible. And I also want to have some room for that giant mass of their muscle that's going to be driving the jaw. And I might even add some striations this way. I don't know how many are going to make it into the final sketch, but I want to indicate something about how the lips are being curled back because we haven't had any like real indication of how that happens, right? So it needs to be furred back somehow, but there's no mechanism that allows us to do that right now in the drawing. I have a little bit of a mask back here, right behind the eye, just to kind of prevent it from looking too canine-like. Uh, I'm going to bring that like a large mask. You would see that in horses and like, apparently in chimps as well. But that's probably this chimp's skull right there. But this is a, it's a musculature. It's a muscular part in the horse. Okay, so right after we finish that, uh, we have to bring some elements of our horses back in here. I'm actually bring back my dog as well because the musculature in the dog was, uh, it's, it's quite well done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the size of the legs because that head needs to be supported somehow. And it's not gonna be supported based on what I just drew. So we'll increase that size. So the problem with doing that, however, is it kind of kills a bit of my my overall design idea, which is to have a giant fucking head. But it needs to be supported somehow, right? So either we have more legs, or either we make it more stockier, or we have to kind of lengthen the limbs a little bit. So we have a lot of options, I guess. Let's just do it like this for the time being. We'll, we'll slightly increase the size of it, and we'll see if we can make it work. I'll still have that beautiful caving 
kind of front portion right there. That, that beautiful cave kind of stomach right there, where the the ribs kind of end and they go into the pelvis. And I'll give him a very distinct looking pelvis as well back there. Uh, at this point, I also want to think about the tail that's going to go in here. We have this lovely tail. Let me resize everything so I have more space. Probably kind of kind of enjoys it, kind of like when a car joy rides, when a dog joy rides in a car and they hang their heads up. I, I believe so. I definitely think they they do enjoy it. So one way of kind of making it work is to have this tail. What is happening? <laughs> one way of doing this is to um, give it a much bigger tail so it counterbalances well enough. And that could be our solution. Well, increase the size of the tail really quickly. Right? And we'll we'll still add the musculature in the, on the back and we'll up the gesture on that slightly. So we have a much more gesture looking leg right there. This is the ankle by the way back there. Let's throw in a ground plane just really quickly so I know what the ground plane is. Nice confident line there. Okay. One of these is gonna be my straight leg, the other's not, so just make sure that uh Let's make that my straight leg. And bring this back down. Nice and easy. So I want to increase the length of my front legs now. So we increase that and we can push the gesture as well at the same time. Let's put the idea of the horse into action. So the horse is going to have um, musculature. So it's going to have a scapula right over there. It's going to have its humerus right over there. Shoulder goes over there. And it's going to have the rest of the things happening here. So the scapula goes down here into the into the shoulder. This over here on top is the elbow. So we have some amount of like information that we need to put over there. So uh, let's just put it because the way that it happens is this, right? It goes that way, that way, and that way. That's uh, how the bones are. So this is the humerus. This is the radius ulna. And up here, that's going to be your scapula. And you have all your musculature attached right over there. You have your teres major. You have your shoulder. Your deltoid that is, you have your bicep, tricep, all that stuff happens right over there. So I, I've kind of like just committed this to memory, the fact that the horse's bone goes this way. Because that's what creates a bit of a protrusion as well, along with the pecs. So that's horse anatomy for you. Not just horse anatomy, but just general tetrapod anatomy to a certain extent. We'll add some musculature back there to include, that's, that's a terrace major kind of poking out there. You want a little bit of stuff for the, um, the front. I don't want to be too dog-like with this because again, the last one was dog-like, so I don't want the design to look too homogenous. So right now you see I'm being a little bit more kind of sketchy with this, and that's perfectly fine. I'm giving him slightly more information around the hooves. There's a bit of a design issue right now because I have this like lizard-like tail with the frills over here, going all the way down to the back, which is a cool idea, I'll grant you. But the problem with that is that it's too isolated. Like I said, it needs to be that same idea needs to be there in more places in the design for it to make any sense. So I only did the idea keep you know, getting it from the um, from the elbow and the arm. So I put it here for the last one. But I don't really want to repeat that. I want to want it to be a bit more unique on this one. So either I bring the striations across across here maybe on the neck. I could do it that way. I could bring the ears out a bit more and get the striations right over there. I could give him a couple of ears like that and bring the striations over here, for example. I think I like that idea a bit more. But I need a little bit more of that same notion because, again, this is like designing in threes. So the design needs to be consistent, um, self-consistent, that is. So we can't go crazy with it. So we need to add that in one more place. I can add it. I can add ridges across this back. I can add double ridges right over there. One going that way, one going this way, and maybe one that's going right over there. And I can do it this way. Add a few ridges right like that. That'd be a cool idea. Because it needs to be consistent, you see. Because it doesn't make any sense that you don't have an animal which has just one part uh, having that particular kind of design element. I want it to be all around the piece. So as opposed to having a big frill, I'll have just multiple small frills. And that way I have a neck um, free to just put some striations on there. I think that'll work out just fine. And this is what we end up with. Let's bring that back down. And we'll go to a new layer. And let's try and specify on this. 
add a bit more specifics as opposed to where things are supposed to be located. Turn my air, air conditioner on really quickly. Now I figure out a little bit more about the face. So I need my face references, which is this chimp and dog. So right now I can go a bit more specific as to the structure of his mouth. Get this, uh, these lips going around. Maybe not that much value. That's better. So right now I've got to be thinking about this as a mass, so it's going to have to protrude outward. I'm going to have to be thinking about my T lines as well, but it should be possible to get to a solution here. Uh, right now I'm going to put in that notion of the nostril really quickly, the way that's structured. Remind me to never get to fight with a monkey. Were you not on Bonnie's stream yesterday? On Bonnie's stream we. Um, I read the police report for an attack by a chimp on, a, on an old lady about how it uh, ripped off her hands, her eyes, her ears, half her face. Uh, it was absolutely horrifying. So everybody was reading horror stories and I just brought out uh, something that's real. The real story about how you can never trust, you can never trust a chimp. Chimps are crazy? Yeah, they should all be destroyed. Back here. Bit more specifics about the gums. At this at this stage, I'm gonna slightly make that far side of the mode a bit more believable. I'll use the same shape as I used on the basking shark. We'll do it that way. That makes more sense. I mean, pretty sure humans are way worse. True, but a human's not gonna rip your fucking hands off and eat you. People get them for pets when they are babies, and then when they grow up, they're stronger than a grown man. Yeah, this this chimp, uh, Travis is his name, he was 200 pounds. And his owner was pushing 70. And there was just nothing that they could do. The police call is one of the most haunting things I've ever heard in my entire life. People should let wild animals live in the wild. I agree. They're all coming out there. Gotta avoid that tangent. Where was the chip attack? Somewhere in the US. Apparently Bubbles had to be kept in a cage because he was too dangerous and he would try to attack anyone that got close. Bubbles? Who's Bubbles? The Powerpuff Girl? Michael Jackson's chimp? Really? I didn't know you had a chimp, I thought, you know, the whole kid thing. See these eyes in here? A big mouse right there. I'm so glad you're talking about important and profound things, but I just told my cat I should let her live in the wild and she said no in the form of a purr. <laughs> well, I guess some exceptions can be made. The thing is, like, in terms of, like, what could happen, like, what's the worst that could happen, right? Oh no, my house cat is on the prowl. Everybody be careful. 
might be mildly inconvenienced by a cat that meows at you. As opposed to, oh no, my chimp is on the prowl. You will literally die screaming. <laughs> Like, I love pit bulls so much. Pit bulls are like one of my favorite dogs. Just, you know, I've, I've, I've never owned one, but, you know, I've interacted with them. I love, I love the way they look. I love how, like, strong they are. But, my fucking God, are they strong. Like, I'm a really, I'm really fucking buff dude. But, okay, I'm not really buff. That's fucking horrible thing to say. I'm a strong enough dude. I'm definitely way above average. Right? Deadlift uh, 400 plus bench 225 easy for fucking 10, 15 reps if I needed to. Uh, single rep 320. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm quite a bit stronger than the average dude. But I will never get into a fight with a pit bull. I will never ever, because I will die. I really, I honestly, I truly believe that I will die. Because the, the fucking, the problem is, I, I, the story that I read about this is, this big, like, this big dude, bigger than me, tried to fucking psychic a, a pit bull in the head, and it just did nothing to it. It just, it, it just ate that like a breath mint. just ate that kick to the face because it's just got so much muscle around their neck you know the recommended thing to do to fight a pit bull is to grab them by their hind legs and you lift their hind legs up and they, they kind of like dangle and flail like they were like a caught snake but at least they won't be able to like just pounce on you and rip your throat out maybe i'm just exaggerating you know maybe i just you know, i've read too many stories and i'm terminally in, in fear you know just i'm just saying if somebody has a pit bull out for a walk and they go, oh no, he's super sweet, don't worry about it, we don't need a leash. I'm gonna be like, listen, fuck you, get that goddamn animal on a leash. Or if they gouge your eyes out, I think putting a hand in their face means you lose the hand, honestly. I was about to suggest you can bench multiple pit bulls, but they would fight you. I think they would, yeah, they would probably fight me trying to bench them. Also, we've shifted over to a fur-based animal, I don't know if anybody caught that, but we, we fur now, boys. We're heavy in the fur. Have you dogs with respect? An animal is an animal. The thing is, like, not all dogs. Like a chihuahua, I'd fuck a chihuahua up easy. Like, I, I don't even need my hands for it. But past a certain amount, like attack dogs, like when it comes to the idea of like Rottweilers and and Dobermans and dogs that can hunt and kill. No, thank you. All right, I'm good. I'm good. I kind of want to live. You know, I want to keep most of my my physical characteristics, right? I don't want my testicles chewed off by a rampaging pit bull. I was going in Dubai. I was in Dubai a few years ago, and this moderately obese lady was driving down with a cheetah in her car. <laughs> One, where the fuck do you buy a cheetah? And two, why is there a cheetah with its lunch driving down the, <laughs> the road? But cheetahs are... A bit of an exception. If there was any big cat that could be tamed, it would probably be a cheetah. Because they don't have the same instincts as a lot of the other big cats, right? I wouldn't even call them a big cat. Because they don't have the same kind of instinctual behavior. Like, there's a lot of videos on this. They're a lot of, like, somewhat docile, I guess. Than other big cats. And they're so super, they're super anxious beings as well, right? Now I know how to put you in line if you piss me off, I'll just use champ. I would, I would never fight champ out of principle. Plus, how, why are you saying that like you wouldn't use champ to put somebody else in line? <laughs> somebody would be an idiot to uh, continue fighting if they saw champ with his giant ass head and these giant muscles. Petey has a big old, big old beautiful dog. And like I said, I love Petey's man, I think they're beautiful. But again, they're terrifying, I would never fight one. To put it into perspective, I'd fight a deer. I would fully fight a deer. I think I could win against a deer. I think if I got behind the antlers, I could choke it to death. But, um, oh, at least I'm conscious. Somehow I believe this. <laughs> but a pit bull? No, man, hell no. I think I could win against a shark. That's how stupid I am. So you're not talking to a sane human being right now. You would get kicked in the last week. No, I wouldn't, man. I'm fast as fuck. I'm fast as fuck. You, you won't even know. I blitz him. I speed blitz him. 
How much cardio does a deer even have? I got way better cardio than a deer. I do no cardio, by the way, I'm just bullshitting. I would ask a deer to spot me and I'd crush his head with a barbell. I always say if I get attacked by a dog, I'm going down fighting. The dog will know it was in a fight with me. <laughs> the dog will remember you. He doesn't have a mean bone in his body, but I'd rather fight a pit bull than a deer though. Deers don't play games. <laughs> Can a doggo is champ? Dangerous. Diaz can run between 60 and 80 kilometers per hour. Do you really want that kick? It's not gonna hit me, dude. What are you talking about? It's not even gonna fucking hit me. I'm way too quick for that shit. <laughs> Good luck kicking the goddamn air, you dear. I'm gonna have me for fucking dinner. What is the point? You would hit the deer. You wouldn't hit the deer, it would have left the scene before you touched it. Yeah, not to mention, we're not talking about a bloodlusted deer here, right? If it was a bloodlusted deer, I'd probably lose. But like, this is a deer that's gonna be scared of humans, so I have the advantage there. I have the psychological advantage. Like Batman versus a scarecrow. Welcome back, Iris. I'd go for a pit bull over a deer. I'd rather stick my arm out and let the pit bull chow down and then get kicked by a deer. I'm not afraid of a fucking deer. My eyes are to the front of my head and their eyes are to the, to the side, which makes them prey and makes me the predator. Alright, Charles Darwin says I will win, so I'm gonna believe him. How about a moose? I'm not stupid. A fucking moose will kill me. <laughs> Are you kidding me? A female moose would just destroy me. <laughs> It'll walk through me is what a moose would do. Or a grizzly? Oh, now we're just talking. Now we're just bullshitting now. You think I win against a grizzly bear? I would be. I mean, I wouldn't win. I think I would. I could maybe maybe survive an encounter because I'm just the right kind of stupid to do a false charge at a grizzly bear, and maybe it won't false charge me and fucking rip my guts out right after I realize I'm a little bitch. That's definitely possible. I saw many sharks in the past. I wasn't too afraid, but then it, 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 they weren't like the, the t terrible kind of sharks. You know, they weren't the. Because the three sharks are the most dangerous, right? Great white number one, hammerhead number two, macro number three, right? Isn't that the list? No, it's great white, bull shark, and then macro shark. Bull shark, tiger shark, those are aggressive. I've swum with black tip and white tip reef sharks, nurse sharks. Um, fairly, fairly big, but nurses are docile. They're not very really harmful at all. They're not, I don't think there's ever been a recorded case of those, those going crazy. I've never swum with a bull shark. I've swum with a baby great white but never with an adult. The closest I've ever got to a full-grown great white is there was this like diving program in a shark enclosure or whatever, where there was a big sheet of glass and you could get, in, get into the tank and basically the shark will stare at you through the sheet of glass. That was in Australia somewhere. I think it was, I think it was in SeaWorld, but that was when I was a kid. So I didn't know how shitty SeaWorld was as a, a practice, but. That's the closest I've ever been to a shark. If I was a bit older at the time, I could have uh, hunted deer in my, uh, my family's land. Without going on to tangents about activities in the park, are there tigers, etc. just in the wood near your area? 
that's not really how it works. The tigers, the um, amount of tigers that are currently in the wild in India are, I mean, it depends on how much you buy into speculation, but the numbers are definitely not that high. So the chances of you running into a tiger are about the same as winning the lottery. Not to mention, I live in a suburban area, so uh, the chance is zero. But as you go more and more towards the outskirts, definitely leopards is a big thing. So the city that I studied in college is a much smaller city, so uh, it was easier for these kind of animals to live there because there's a lot more greenery and a lot less people. But there's a lot more people in my township, so the chances of me meeting an animal here are, are significantly reduced. I have seen camels and elephants and all that stuff, but those are all domesticated. I've never seen anything larger than a very large snake in my locality. Yeah, the, the chap is in uh, everybody's Discord. You can check mine as well. He's in the Selfies channel. He's a little cutie pie. But they generally want to stay away from humans, though. Well, yeah, no, no kidding. They don't want to hunt. They don't know what happens for the animals that get too friendly with the humans. The term man eater, very common. At least it used to be 20 years ago. But all the man eaters have been hunted down because the uh, the state used to put bounties on them. A snake? It's a rat snake. Harmless. The vipers don't grow that big. And of course, if you go to the outskirts, there are a lot of cobras. Um, but again, they're not like the super deadly kind of cobra. Like, it'll it'll hurt like a motherfucker, but you're not going to die from the, um, the bite. There was a giant snake though. That rat snake was huge. It was uh, between 10 and 15 feet easily. Giant rat snake. I need this little dude over here to get a pallet from because I want them to have the same value structure. That's what I was thinking about, I was wondering about man-eaters. I saw on TV that maybe they were man-eaters because of drinking salt water and made them a little crazy. I don't know about salt water. It's just that some animals are a little bit more predisposed to violence and, you know, horrible acts than others. Like sometimes they're just deranged. But hard to tell the cause, but definitely is a real thing. Animals that develop a, a taste for human flesh, but the stories are somewhat they're a little bit sensationalized, and I feel like a lot of the times people used to, used to call tigers man-eaters just to justify hunting them, uh, which is what a lot of people did um, maybe 50 years ago, which is why the populations are so small. Of course, the major reason that the population is smaller right now is because of the um, afforestation. I'm sorry, deforestation, but um, beyond that. I'm gonna darken up those lines a bit more. That's a thresholding function, by the way, if anybody's curious. A quick little mask. Oh, tigers, I just love them. See, just look how cute he is. To be fair, it's hard to be... I'm, I am very passionate about animal conservation and all that stuff, but I would never, like, pretend like a tiger is a, like a cuddly thing. You're just not. Like, they had some uh, big cat rescue stuff on, on YouTube and Instagram, which is kind of nice to see and all that stuff, but... Like, it, these people can easily just lose their life one day. These are not animals to be trifled with. Cheetahs I'll give an exception to, because those aren't, those aren't really... Like, I don't classify them as big cats, and they don't behave like big cats. But the rest of them, they just they, they kill you. 
no matter who you are. And the people that take care of him also have no illusions towards that fact, I think. Let's get the graphical read in here. I think I want the entire skin to be a little bit lighter. Take a lighter value. Because I want to really push that darkness in the mouth. So I can push the lightness in the teeth. I only mentioned something about bath salts too yesterday, I think. It made me so curious now. Yeah, there was a whole bath salt thing, uh, like an epidemic almost, Iris, not that long ago. Where a bunch of people used to take bath salts. And they would just go completely mental. And because of this profound effect it has on your, on your brain chemistry, it just made you walk into bullets basically and feel no pain and uh, perform acts of cannibalism horrific stuff big cats look very soft but my little less than 10 pound cat can beat me up <laughs> yeah you gotta be careful right and plus, they, they're, they're creatures that are built to kill, so they're very effective with what they have as well. I think bath salts is the name of a drug, isn't it? Yes, bath salts. Well, they're technically just, they're exactly what they say. They're salts that have, uh, like, I guess, hygienic usages or whatever, or, or they're used for, uh, for cleaning. I don't, I don't quite sure exactly what bath salts are for, now that I think about them. But um, yeah, the intended purpose is not to eat them and then go full cannibal. That's definitely not what they intend. Like, not actual bot salt? I was under the impression that it was actual bot salt. That was the impression that I got. I'm using a lot of alpha locking just to save me time. Good technique to use, but of course it matters how good your mask is. Because shit like that can happen easily if you don't watch out. Get a, a general read and then I can cut through and build some musculature really quickly. That's kind of an idea. Alright, but the drug isn't actually about salts. Right. But stuff like horse tranquilizer, like ketamine, that's actually. Uh, Ketamine, I'm pretty sure. Let's cut the line strength a little bit on that. Thanks, internal memo, now we'll buy bot salts. <laughs> Gotta be careful, Iris. Who knows? Might give in to that temptation someday. What are your eyes gonna look like? How do you get the color test text again? Slash me. M E. <laughs> slash me, not me slash. There you go, you got it. <laughs> you lost it, you took it from me. I guess you're doomed now, Iris. Let's throw on some lighter colors here. I'm keeping the region of value really strict here. And that's not for a reason because I don't want extreme reads here. And just in general, when you're drawing organics, the plane shifts are not going to be that strong. I think that's a very important thing to realize. 
like when you're drawing mechanical parts and stuff like that, you can afford to have very strict amounts of value shifts. Uh, as well as the fact that if you draw something that's very muscular, it's usually going to be very angular as well, which means that value shifts are somewhat okay. But when something is covered in fur, when you're drawing a person or a face, the shift in value are not going to be that high. So if you say the face is generally bright, and you say there's going to be a dark in this area of general bright, maybe six times out of ten, that dark's not going to be that dark. Unless it's an occlusion or a cast shadow, in which case it's going to be very dark. It's kind of idea. Just for more graphical quality, I'm going to give this, this hair over here on his back, I'm going to make that darker. But over here we can use some, uh, we can show some education here, I think. We'll show a little bit of education with the, uh, the texture brush here. How about spots like a hyena? It's not a bad suggestion. We haven't gotten to the surface texture stage, but I will keep that in mind. I like that a, a lot, actually. And it's a fan suggestion. So thankful for, for the tips from these lovely people. There you go. More than happy to help, Iris. His head looks like a hyena. He does kind of, right? Certainly does. It's funny how we combine like a dog and a chimp and we ended up at a hyena. Probably wouldn't have been a bad thing to reference, to be honest. I wouldn't mind referencing a hyena. Since the hair on the back of the tail is a little bit more sparse, I'll put a slightly more... a lighter value back here because it's going to be more air filtering through. Are those real birds or in the music? Oh, they're, they're real. Those are my pet birds. Every Indian keeps a pet bird to uh, warn them of uh, deadly coal gases in the neighboring mines. It's sometimes a canary, sometimes a cuckoo. Really, pets? Yeah, more like a, like a rudimentary warning system. Like a, you know, like a, like a, like a Jiger or a Geiger counter? We have them in animal form. So like, instead of traditional instruments, we kind of use animals, we kind of harness the power of animals. So instead of like a thermometer, for example, you'd have like a certain type of frog that you keep in a jar. And when the temperature is like, it's like you want the AC to be set at like 20 degrees Celsius, you kind of like you you hit the, the frog a certain number of times and then it'll it'll, it'll rivet when it hits 20 degrees because it has like pores in its skin that de de detect like the temperature so like just just rudimentary technology it's kind of like it's what the flintstones is based off of really like we have a giant goat like a rare south indian mountain goat and we use that as a trash compactor And every day when I uh, get home from work, I slide down the tail of my giant brontosaurus. <laughs> and I get locked out of the door by my, <laughs> my wife, who I hate. <laughs> a wise choice, never know when you'll need to explore abandoned mines. See, there, there you go, somebody got the canary reference, good job. That's a good reference right there. Okay. It's just a little bit of highlight on you. Oh, we can use Erica's idea right now. You said spots, right, Erica? Spots sound good to me. Well, to be fair, the last one had spots. I want to give this one stripes, if that's okay with you. 
the stupid Flintstones references. If Flintstones stole the, stole my backstory and my culture, I think I'm okay to steal from steal from them. Just steal it back, you know. So let's take it to the man sometimes, Ams. Don't let them just take from you. I haven't used this one in a while. They were highly intelligent Flintstone references. See, he gets it. Ooh, we're getting into some interesting territory right there. You're gonna go on a different layer. I don't trust you. Okay, the texture kind of helps there. Where is the last one that has spots? He has little spots right there. I'm still stuck on the frog in the jar thing. I was joking, guys. Uh, just 95% of that is was false. We do keep birds though, but that's because of our religion. <laughs> Fucking jets comes out of lurk. <laughs> to call bullshit, I love it. <laughs> Alright, so instead of art, 95% of what James says is bullshit. No, that's not wrong. That's not untrue. <laughs> Uh, to put value or to not put value, that's the question. Nah, it looks like a weird double jaw if I do that. This tongue, however, needs to go lighter. Just lighten up that tongue and apply just a little bit of value on the inside of the mouth. Just to show your education, you know? Sometimes it's just important to show your education. I missed the frog in the jar. Oh, that's what we use instead of a thermometer. We use a temperature control frog. Imagine not using your frog thermometer in 2018. SMH. I thought you spoke of me just then, a jar. What's your name? Your name is Jafar. And sometimes a car. You get a car, you get a car. I definitely miss you in a jar. <laughs> let's put some, um, some little little white markings. Again, that's, that's one of those intelligent plays right there. I want to show you intelligent make these kind of marks. I'm showing my stupid actually. I thought his name was Ass Hair Ketchum. I'm gonna catch them all. What a relief about the frogs. I almost thought I had to PM you about leaving the frogs alone. <laughs> ah shit. Why did you guys have to go and ruin it? I could have saved that PM. I could have saved it for the, for the rest of time. I would have loved that PM. Could have ruined my fun, guys. A bunch of palookas. As I go lower on the legs, I'm actually using the default value of the body. I'm not using the same light because the legs are generally darker. So it doesn't make that much sense to put the same light down there. So I'm turning it down appropriately so I maintain my same gradient. I can't let you do that to virus. No fun. I kind of drew this guy with really sharpy, like sharp kind of fur, but I kind of regret my decision. Maybe I'd like him to be a poofer instead. I like poofers, but then he's like, he's so angry with life. He's just not, he's not happy with the way that the, the economy is doing right now. So I don't know if giving like lovely luscious locks like this makes much sense, right? 
Like even like big old Malamute, Malamute hair. I don't know if I'm okay with that idea. I don't think it's a very good design decision. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. Oh well, maybe the next one. Let's use some general darkening. Maybe he just got a haircut. It's true. Never know. Okay. I'm gonna add a couple of spouts. A couple of spouts in a few places. And then we'll call this one done. Another big mud creature. How crazy that we just we're just making these out of the top of our heads. Pretty fun. Have you thought have you often how often do you think about climate during your creature design? Is it all uh, but just creating something that looks cool? It depends, really. So there are a few things to consider there. So Angevir brought up this point um, before, about the idea that um, it's good to kind of think about what you're going to be doing and where it's going to be situated. And I think it's a great suggestion. I think it's a very good uh, point to be made. So right now I'm just pushing the idea of, because I, I want this to be like initially semi-aquatic, but in the middle of rendering I shifted, I shifted it to fur. Because I, just want to, I like the fur and the monkey and I want to see what it would look like. But yeah, that's definitely a consideration that a lot of people will make. The idea that, okay, well, I'm going to do this particularly for this purpose. This is going to be a beast of burden that's going to be used by a faction that usually has lizards in them. It's going to have scales. It's going to have these kind of icons on them. Since it's tame, it's going to have a bunch of um, like human components on there. Like it's going to have flags and banners and saddles and, and straps and things like that. So it does alter stuff quite, um, quite heavily. Like if you look at this uh, page of creatures, these are all large beasts of burden that have like semi-militaristic application. So these, for example, like these pages over here. Oh fuck! I can't believe you've done this. Like the ones in the below, those are all. They have a very similar team, which is it's an animal that carries a giant gun, like a, a mounted alt artillery or a howitzer or something like that. So there are a variety of like configurations of that. So some of them look like, like rhinoceroses, some of them look like giant lizards and dinosaurs. And ultimately I ended up choosing the bottom one because I, I thought it would look funny, I thought it would look cool. And um, I did some orthos on him. Some orthographics right there. Thanks for the follow by the way, uh, Akari. Good to see you. Cast W Art, welcome. Thanks for the raid, I appreciate that. Very kind of you. I'm just uh, designing some creatures today. We can keep designing this. Hopefully, you guys enjoy that kind of stuff. Usually, I do studies, but today, just uh, bringing some creature designs into the fray, showing people how I usually develop my my concepts. How I start, start them from the very beginning, which is just getting references, and then bringing them into uh, just kind of like a finished sketch kind of phase. So we're doing basically this right now. I had silhouettes, and I'm bringing them into finished sketches. Thank you, Akari. I appreciate that. How's it going, Cass? How's it going? Good to see it. How was your stream? What were you working on? Pop something in the chat so I can show the good people. But yeah, we've done two so far. If you'd like to see my silhouettes on these. So these are the two ones that we've done so far. This is like a mid, like a smallish creature. This is like a largest creature. And I'll show you the accompanying silhouettes in a second. These are the final silhouettes. So this one is the bottom one. And the top one is this one over here. Wait, not that one. That one. So you see, we're kind of, we're kind of translating those sketches into finished work. Not finished, but the idea is up there, right? It's in the sketch phase. And if you want to see any more of my work, here are some studies of um, Bougaro, of traditional oil painting studies, done digitally. Some paintings, some one-hour portraits of my moderators right there. And we have some armor studies done in an hour. 
We have some animal studies in an R. Some running people, some spice, some <laughs> lovely animal couples. I love drawing these. And some environment studies. Thank you, Black Lotus. I appreciate you. Pop whatever you're working on, or pop your Instagram, or whatever you'd like, Cass. The, uh, the chat is yours. I do appreciate the raid. Thanks so much. Do this more often. You like this? I do need the practice. I don't know what this is doing there. I apologize. I think I was helping somebody out there. The tiger is one of my favorites. That's a good. Uh, it's a good little piece right there. I like the tiger as well. I'm really liking the animal studies. Animals are a lot of fun. So when I decided to start learning color formally, I chose animals as my subject because when I learn certain ideas or certain topics, I pick something similar so I don't have to focus too much on structure and um, on, on, on context specific things. So I kind of I double down on particular subject matter. So for values, I did it based on people. So I drew a bunch of women, but for colors, I drew a bunch of um, dogs, cats, big cats, big dogs, so wolves, puppies, kittens, and lions and tigers. So I drew that almost exclusively, and a bunch of birds. For me, design stuff is more interesting than normal studies. True, but uh, the thing is, people like to kind of participate in the study a lot of the time, and it's hard to participate in design, because design is a much, much rougher thing to teach. Bunch of births, <laughs> bunch of birds. I love birds. Birds are very cool. Some birds. I have a lot of them on my uh, on my Instagram. Yeah, but share. Do share. I have this one hanging around. I have a little pupper, a little puppy, and a duckling. That's a that's a painting that I did. This is a one-hour painting, I believe, sixty minutes. Really fun. This whole uh, Instagram, by the way, of this little dash and is just so good. There's so many good refs to paint. I think I've painted some of them multiple times. That is a good fish dog. Thank you, Pivlo. He's a big mouthed fish dog. I do some Pokemon stuff every now and again. There are a couple of midnight rabbit ashes. There's probably an Arcanine piece somewhere over here as well. I think this is the same dog. Another one hour piece, but of course not as not as finished. With a bunch of ducklings. I haven't seen a dodo yet. It's because they're extinct, Iris. That's why. Apparently some of the birds live with you. I mean a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do sometimes. There you go. Hams made the same joke. Feels bad, man. Now my joke seems unfunnier because you said it. <laughs> Way to go, my moderation stuff. That's some examples of my work then. Again, um, if you'd like to share any work, I'd love to see it. Uh, otherwise, I'm just gonna, gonna grab your Instagram and force people to look at it. Because God knows when you say, hey guys, please give this person a follow, please check them out. Their work is incredible. Everybody just blinks and then just carries on doing whatever they were doing. <laughs> Which I don't blame you. I will do that sometimes as well. But come on, man. Twitch, Twitch creative. We're a tight knit community here. We gotta be like a community. We gotta be like a family. Cause uh, we don't got we don't got ninja views, right? We don't got crazy, crazy amounts of people. I hear you guys. This is I'm not following you, cats. What the. F are you kidding me? Hold on, I need to load my, fo my phone up. But uh, I do appreciate the raid. Hold on, let me just quickly do that. I think the last time we made it, I had the same problem. Instagram doesn't let me follow stuff on my computer. But here is the examples of Cassius' work. Look how good she is. So beautiful. Imagine, imagine not sitting in front of a computer, hunched over like a gremlin in the middle of the dark, like I'm doing right now. I imagine going outside and using the world as your canvas, right? Truly, 
just a, a level of human being that's above what I am right now. But fantastic work, my goodness. <laughs> really good stuff. Dude, legitimately, just now, when I opened up my phone, I accidentally opened up my front-facing camera. God damn, dude, I don't need that reminder, you know? Jesus Christ. I don't even look that bad. I know what I look like, but what? They, they put something in there, man. There's some sort of, like, ugly modifier, I swear to goodness. God damn, I hate being confronted with the truth, you know? It hurts. It burns me deep. It's about going outside and breathing fresh air. It's uh, quite the decision right there. I always paint, I'm always painting feathers, I think. I have a bird problem. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Such beautiful, beautiful details. But the process as well. You got everything here. Starts with value, respectable. I like the block in as well. There's little lines there. Bring stuff out, I'm assuming. So beautiful. Very, very nice. I like the, I almost said per permissions. I like the persimmons and the, the persimony, per persimmons. Those are the, um, those are these I'm assuming. Defo go power. I very much like. Good job. And thanks for the rain. Hit that follow button, guys. Jesus. I'm just gonna, gonna tell you. There, there you go. I saw abs hit it. I was in your chat just now. We might, um, we might call it here actually, because I got this weird lumpy feeling in my throat. Because I was uh, singing right before the stream, and I may have uh, sung one too many Linkin Park songs, and it may have fucked me up permanently. But uh, more on that later. Let's get the two things that we drew today, along with all our silhouettes. You can put them side by side. Slightly different ideation and process on both of them, but very fun to do regardless. Let's get a little hyena puppy boy over there, and we'll get our lovely little basking shark doggo right there as well. Are you getting sick? I might. Uh, I'm actually Hindu though. I'm old enough to remember when he used to sing on stream. <laughs> used to happen. Used to happen. I even had a singing emote. Imagine that. Did your voice become so numb? Well, it does. I tend to talk continuously throughout my entire stream. I understand that not having a, a camera sort of separates me from you guys. So I always try to keep a constant dialogue to the entire stream. And sometimes I've been talking the entire day. I've been uh, doing stupid things like singing in the end 15 times in a row on my ukulele. So sometimes it gets a little bit problematic to continue but hey we manage right we manage i'm hindu though oh uh, somebody said are you are you becoming sick or something <laughs> that was a joke all right guys i think i'll call it right there so we did a bunch of silhouetting i kind of walked into my process behind how you arrive at like a, a cool little creature like that i think that's a cool little creature I feel like objectively, that's an okay looking creature. It's not bad, not good, but it's okay. And we did all these silhouettes. I know these look really shitty right now, but that's the point, right? You see how like a two minute silhouette can end up with, end up looking like really, really cool. Like that's the whole process. And the reason it looks so shitty is because it allows us to iterate. Not doing the third one, sure. That's the one that I left for you, Abs, you see? So you're my, uh, my beautiful partner in crime. And that's the one that I left to you, because I expected you to, um, you know, join me in this endeavor. And together, perhaps we can make something of ourselves. But I guess not. Maybe I overestimated. Maybe I, uh, I reached too, too far. But regardless, you used to do ukulele erotic freestyles with members of the chat. It was not erotic. It was a serenade. Well, how, what's erotic about a serenade? One's talking about how beautiful you are, and the other one's talking about just how big your titties are. 
so there's a big difference, right? One's like done deftly, you know, it's a, it's a good craft, it's respectable as a profession, the other one's just wrong. Now all you do is talk about art and tell tales about your... <laughs> you like tales about my childhood, that part you like, because they're always interesting. Alright guys, not to ramble on too long, but we are going to go raid somebody. Thanks so much for stopping by, it was a lovely stream. I got to do some work right now, some, uh, get some stuff out of the way for myself. But in the meantime, hopefully we can go send somebody else some love. Let's see who's online. No problem, Azar. Hopefully you got something helpful from, uh, from today. Hopefully you all did, because I don't stream design all that often. Design is a fun little thing. And I don't do creature design all that often either, so this was very good for me uh, to do. So I had a lot of fun doing it. A lot of good takeaways. And uh, good to kind of substantiate some ideas that I have. <laughs> Everybody goes poopy cat. All right, poopy cat, sure. Why not? All right, guys. That is it for me. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, any of that good stuff, if you'd like to learn a bit, little bit more about drawing and, you know, you don't want to search the internet for it, you're more than welcome to bombard me with questions. I love answering them. Allows me to verify my own information, see if I'm not completely full of shit. So feel free to join my Discord, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Instagram, contact me anywhere, and I'll try and get back to you. Otherwise, have a wonderful remainder of your weekend. You'll most likely see me tomorrow at about the same time, and we will do some more traditional studies, most likely. Uh, well, traditionally done studies on the computer. But until then, I hope you are, you know, I hope you do well. Honestly, I do. And I'll catch you over at Poopycat Stream. Make sure you follow her as well. Have a, have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Cheers.